All right, let's uh, call the meeting to order, a uh, special meeting of the Board of Finance. Uh, let's all rise and uh, begin with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we should wish Tara a happy birthday. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Uh, we have some important things to do this evening. I uh, want to let everyone in the room know that uh, we have Maura Wertheimer and Linda Schofield are on the phone. Uh, Linda and Maura, if you wish to uh, comment, uh, you're going to have to go off mute and speak up, and we will try to make uh, this work. We know this isn't optimal, but we wanted to be sure we had full input. Very important things we're talking to, we're talking about tonight. Uh, tonight we will act as a Board of Finance and review and approve uh, the final budgets for the Board of Selectmen, Board of Education, and for the capital projects. Uh, there will be discussion about that before we do that. Once approved, uh, the goal of tonight would be to put these budgets to referendum uh, by the voters on June 13th. Uh, we will do this, of course, before we have an approved final budget from the State of Connecticut. And without that an approved budget, uh, we are left with uncertainty about expense items that the state may mandate be paid by the town and about the level of state revenue and reimbursement support. Uh, the most uh, publicized of these uncertainties, of course, is over the proposal by Governor Malloy that the towns pay some portion of the teacher's retirement pension, but it is not the only potential expense mandate or revenue reduction contemplated in the various budget scenarios put forth by those in Hartford, both the Democrats, Republicans, and the governor. Uh, so in order to fulfill our responsibility as a town to approve a budget, obtain uh, taxpayer approval, and set a mill rate to collect taxes that cover our approved expenses, we are forced to include some contingencies in our budget, and that will be part of this uh, evening's discussion as, as well. Um, so let's, let's begin by reviewing the Board of Selectmen budget adjustments. So uh, no formal presentation, Lisa, but if you'd like, uh, just for the record, to uh, tell us what has done since our meeting last week. <laughs> So, as you know, we've made a series of cuts. So the first time you, if you want to think, I feel like Oprah. All right, the first time, <laughs> the first time you asked us to make cuts, it was for two hundred thousand. You remember we did a combination of operating and uh, cash capital. The second time you asked us to go back and look at other options. So, uh, we're the majority of it for two years, like moving out five five and keeping in three hundred thousand for some other improvements. Then um, you asked for, again, came back and asked for an additional 100 reduction in operating costs. And what I did is I put them all together for you on uh, these papers. And you can see uh, the Board of Finance did uh, seem to be agreeable, the no vote taken, and giving credit is the 55,000 shared building inspector position. So that is a savings, not necessarily a reduction because that's money coming back in. Right. Um, the rest are listed on your sheet. I don't know if you want me to go through them line by line or if you have any specific questions. I, I don't think we need to go through all of them. Um, all of the members of the board received this from you this morning, I believe, right? Yeah, I did email detail. it, and you have a hard copy here. I don't know if uh, Moira and Moira Linda. And, um, uh, Linda get a chance to look at it, but um, we appreciate this kind of detail and Chris presentation. Very helpful. Um, uh, yep. I, I sh yeah, go ahead. The, the other thing you had asked us to do was to prioritize some other capital, and we did not make a, take a vote to recommend further reductions, but you do also have before you the pr priority list of capital that you had requested. Okay, so we'll come back to that in okay. a minute, all right? I appreciate it. Um, so let's, let's deal with the Board of Selectmen budget, I think, first. Um, at least at this level, and then we want to put up the worksheet and show how we intend to work with the contingencies in just a minute. 
Uh, uh, comments about the cuts that they made uh, from the board, Kevin or Derek? I mean, I just want to, you know, I went, I attended the board of selectmen meeting on uh, Monday, and I know how hard they worked. And I, you know, commend them for how much effort they put in, and you know the decisions that they're making. Are, I mean, it's tough. So I, I appreciate the effort that they've put in. Yeah, I would say no, no one enjoys any of this. This obviously is very difficult. Uh, harsh realities call for harsh actions, and I would echo the same thing. The the uh, level of detail and how far down you went to obtain these kind of reductions uh, is is very much appreciated by our board, by me certainly. Um, and I, I, we, I reviewed all the correspondence that we received from people in the community, and I take it that their comments were reflected in the decisions you made. I, I saw comments from uh, the Chamber of Commerce. I don't think I saw anything from the visitor, the, the Farmington Valley. But those are comments but after the you did what you did, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so I think everyone was on notice that. Um, that these cuts might be made. I think uh, once you, you know, yep. 200, you skate by 400, it gets close 500. You have to make some very hard cuts. Um, I reduced my salary as well because I didn't want to ask others to reduce uh, if I wasn't willing to step up. So that's included. In. And you can see some of the others are going to be funded through uh, special revenue funds, especially on the police side. <coughs> Uh, can you just comment on the 20,000 in Sims Reforms Farms operating transfer? Is that to the um, yes. special revenue fund? Yes. So re as you recall, we do a 90,000 a year right. transfer. This past year, we were at 40,000 positive. I do expect us to not be positive this year. But that was uh, one of the suggestions we thought that might be of interest to you since you were on the subcommittee that did that. I will say. <laughs> oh, so that's what this is. <laughs> yeah, right. I, what I will say is to remember about, and we, Jerry's here as well, and we had a conversation about this. Typically in a, in a fee generating fund like this that is dependent on the weather, there is going to be fluctuations. And a twenty to 30,000, even 40,000 fluctuation is de minimis in that size of a budget and you have to have some contingency or flexibility there because you just can't predict the weather um so i i think that's to be expected uh because they had some extra money last year they'll be able to use that reserves for this year and they're trying to hold uh, expenses down very much towards the end of the year and we're really hoping for a beautiful june uh, to get us there but it is you know weather dependent and yeah. so this is some of the cuts we're making you're you're it might not come true. We understand. Okay. We understand. And, and when you're down to a thousand or two or three or four or five thousand dollars in a twenty million dollar budget, it's it, it, to, to pick a line item out and say that it's right, you know, or accurate yeah. is is difficult. At least, I mean, I was there, so I understand the thirty-five thousand five hundred reduction in reserves for unnegotiated salaries. Can you just explain that to the rest of the board, please? So I will try. We generally don't have discussions about um, salary nego negotiations in public, but as you know, we do try and. But it's the reserves, right? Your reserves. It's the amount that you that they set aside, aside for, for contract negotiations. Right. Yeah. So if contracts go uh, favorably, then we might realize some of it. If they yes. Don't when go, we set the they, reserves, that was prior to the governor's budget, so it was a different economic climate when we set those reserves. Yeah. Um, but again, that's some of that is out of our control. But that's fair to point out. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. It was a very deliberate process, and I, <coughs> I have no. Go ahead. And I'll, 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 maybe not specific, but say we'll put some back or uh, however you want. To yeah. So I, I'm going to go ahead and just make a. I'm going to make a motion to um, accept your recommendations, with the exception of. Um, your salary reduction, and then I'd like to keep in the uh, Sim Simsbury Chambers and the Farmington Valley Visitors Association. Uh, I'll second that. I want to be careful to say it's not just because they wrote letters to us, but we do we do think that those are important. I think the chamber nice. has value. Yeah. So I would say all three do. If you recall, the um, Simsbury Main Street Partnership brought in over four hundred thousand in grants. So. We tried to lump them all together, but I, so and I appreciate your offer on the salary, but really it's okay. 
I mean, if I'm going to ask uh, our town to give up some stuff, I, I'm oh, well, I'm very comfortable with that. So the total of those is twenty four thousand right. dollars. So you're you're including the Main Street Partnership as Main well. Main Street, yeah, five right. five and four near the bottom, and ten thousand dollars salary reduction. I. Yeah, I guess I'm just I'm thinking about process here because we haven't pulled up the mill rate worksheet. I'm not really sure what the Board of Education has done. And, um, you know, again, as I've said in the last couple of meetings, I'm really looking at the Board of Selectmen to make these very difficult decisions. They're elected to make these decisions, and uh, it's not for us to uh, supplant their judgment on this. Uh, we need to come up with a, a budget that works. So, you know, th th these are the des decisions they made. So I guess I'm just uh, not certain why we're kind of I picking and choosing certain areas. I, I would want to have more information, I guess, on on all of these before I would choose a couple who happen to write in over others. There, I would think there were decisions that uh, were made, for example, on the Farmington Valley Visitors Association, there may be more efficient ways of accomplishing our objectives. I don't know. Um, I mean, I got the, the, le the letter was very well put, um, nicely written, so they'll continue providing limited services. Um, Chamber of Commerce, uh, I take it you determine the businesses are going to step to the plate more to fund certain I think th this, they're talking about a uh, separate phone line. So what I would say is we did not recommend these cuts, as you'll recall, in our recommended and budget Initial to you. Budget, right. Yeah, so those were not recommended. In making the hundred, we did have to go to a level that um, we didn't know where else to go. Well, I guess I I just uh, feel feel a little uncomfortable. I guess making these policy decisions for the the board of selectmen. Um, I mean, and, and are these prioritized in the order in which you would? They're have? not prioritized. Yeah. So that, that would have been helpful, too. I probably would have wanted to consider your prioritization. Uh, we do not have a, a regular meeting schedule. We have a special meeting after this. We will not be able to amend the agenda to do that, and it would be after the time you need to make your vote. Right. So so we could do this one of two ways. We, we could not do it, in which case you could just vote no if we wanted to, Jeff, and that's perfectly fine. We could. Uh, uh, back off on the hundred thousand dollars we've asked and make it seventy five and and then they could reprioritize on their own. Uh, we do have line item, you know. No, approval, I know we have but, the approval, but I, but I, I think I, we've been, you know. I do agree. I, I agree that yeah. to you know individually pick, but um, so I don't, I'm not sure you can legally do that because okay. you have to pass a line item budget for the board of selectmen budget. So what you pass will be the line items that will go to referendum. Um, as I understand it, unless I've got that wrong, Tom, is that your understanding? These as well? are all individual line items they on are. the budget. Okay, is that true? Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Or they come from individual line items. Some of them are part of a broader line item, but yeah. Okay. So, so in other words, one would be like support. You could for give us a twenty-five thousand contingency line item, and then we could use it that way if you wanted. You could add that. I, would, I think I'd prefer to do that and then have the yeah, board of okay. select to make that decision. That's a solution I can deal with. Okay. All right. All right. So when we come to the overall contingency, we'll consider that. Okay. All right. So do we want to table the motion so, or uh, you want to withdraw the motion so or we just withdraw uh, the motion? Withdraw the motion. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your effort on that and the thoughtfulness. Yeah, all right, so then the next would be to review the Board of Ed, Ed budget adjustments. So, Tara? Hi. Hi. Um, thank you for wishing me happy birthday. <laughs> um, we realize the difficulties in planning this year's budget due to the state's inability to give any concrete budget protections. We submitted a responsible budget in March. We've been working on our budget since January, very detailed and very deliberately and thoughtfully. We've since cut this budget significantly by $800,000, and we've acquiesced to the delay of the much-needed Henry James Memorial School upgrades, which will result in a $1.5 million um, change in our budget. This reduces the rigorous programming and services we can provide our students. The number one economic development, development driver for the town of Simsbury is the school district. 
Every one of our Board of Education members has been approached multiple times around town by people who are very upset with these kind of cuts to our district. People are saying that they moved to Simsbury for the schools. Most are aware that there's no substantiated state budget impact to the town as of yet and are concerned about doing too much too soon. Many of them are um, very concerned about what this is going to look like in the future for their children who have come here. Further cuts to our budget will diminish our ability to provide the education that people expect and thus will drastically impact our future economic development opportunities. These are not widgets that will be cut. They are people. They impact our students and our education. Cutting a total of $1.9 million from our budget will force us to make dramatic changes to our programming and will change the look of our classroom and schools forever. The decision to make these cuts within a week was nothing that we felt we could do responsibly, thoughtfully, or with this kind of depth that needs to be done because this is really, we're getting down to very important parts of our programming. So the, in that said, the Board of Education respectfully requests that you make no further cuts to our budget. Cutting an additional $400,000 is not going to change the mill rate significantly, but it will change the way education looks in Simsbury and thus the way others will look at us as we try to go economically. We can't cut off our nose to spite our face. Please do not make further cuts to our budget. Thank you. So uh, it's up to the board now to uh, discuss and decide. Well, I guess I, I feel like we need to take a look at the mill rate worksheet and try to figure out okay. uh, how we're going to how we're going to do this and manage this. I and mean, we, you know, we're. Fair enough. I don't know, line item by line item, um, in review their budget, they've determined that they have no ability to cut anything without it significantly impacting our programs. <coughs> so. As bad as it is, we're not looking at a Congressional Budget Office report that will leave an additional 23 million people without any health insurance whatsoever. Additional 23 million in our country. All right, so obviously we've sent around multiple iterations of this at this point. This, this version now um, is sort of where we were at the end of the last meeting, where we basically reset everything back to where it was last year in order to now put a uh, contingent expenditure line and a contingent revenue line in total uh, so people can start to figure out where their uh, <coughs> comfort level is as we have this uh, uncertainty. So I can certainly pull up older versions of the middle the Millery worksheet as well if you'd like. Yeah, you know, I tried to do this today and I think it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard and because we this has been an iterative process as we've learned about uh, various scenarios from the governor and the legislature and we tried to make it simple at the beginning and we were missing you know we were missing the forest for the trees and then we tried to put all the trees back on the map and now I can't see the forest in the middle of it. So then this was an attempt to simplify it again. It does lose some of the specificity in things that have been suggested that will happen, especially on the revenue side, uh, ECS in particular, and municipal revenue sharing. But what we've tried to do with this model now is to say uh, that there are two ways the state can impact our budget that will require us to be uh, Agile is not the right word, but, but to respond. One is that they could, in fact, end up pushing down mandated expenses, and the most frequently mentioned is the teacher retirement pension payments. Uh, but there's nothing stopping them from uh, doing other uh, revenue sharing or uh, among the towns uh, as see fit. Uh, the other equally likely or more likely uh, based on the scenarios we've heard is that they will take away some of the things that they've given us in the past, and notably uh, the East education cost sharing. Uh, the car tax seems to be resolving itself. There seems to be consensus that uh, 
that is going back to something more normal, uh, but also municipal revenue sharing. And although there's also been a lot of discussion about the fact that the uh, education cost sharing is budget neutral at the state because it basically just rearranges the money that uh, goes from the rich towns to the uh, to other towns. I really shouldn't say it that way. From the towns that are, are you know more able to pay than others, that does save the governor or somebody from having another line item expense item on their budget to solve that problem some other way. So it isn't really truly uh, revenue neutral. Having said all of that, what we've done is. Uh, tried to use this as a way to say the impacts of all of these uh, changes that we've made that uh, we've discussed is to include a contingency uh, line for uh, teacher retirement payments or other expenses from the state that will be part of the Board of Selectmen budget. <laughs> and so that will be part of our total budget which will increase to, uh, on this chart here, $96,854,000. We will equally uh, take a $3 million contingency by reducing the reserve, I mean the uh, rev uh, contingency against revenue. Now this really isn't part of the budgets that will be approved. We only approve the expense budgets of the Board of Ed and the Board of Selectmen and the capital budget. We don't approve a revenue budget. But we will, that does uh, directly impact the mill rate that we have to charge because the, the grand list and the mill rate determine how much we have in taxes to pay the $96,854,000 plus any uh, pluses and minuses on reserves. So now to your point, Jeff, this, so we, we can go through this now. So this was, uh, Sean, you filled this in today with a million two, which is a million. Uh, let's just go through the reduction of the Board of Selectmen budget now is, does it include the, the updates from last night or Monday night? Yes, yeah, so this is the original 37895 they found plus or minus another 100000 100000 all right, which is all of those things that are on the... Yes. Uh, all plus but partially offset by the $55,000 revenue item at the bottom from Bloomfield. <coughs> and then so, that, so all of the things that you've done are on this sheet now. <coughs> and it also includes the reduction in uh, debt service from the delay of the Senior Center and the Henry James. And that's the only items that have been delayed. All of the other capital budgets items are not they're in here bonded uh, and expensed against on a five-year basis or a well no so what what's in here now is just the debt service payments plus um, the anticipated debt service payment for the issuance that we're doing in two weeks plus a small portion for cash for capital as okay. outlined in here but, but all but the funding you're the the bonding you're doing and the cash we have would pay for all of the other capital projects as they previously approved capital project right. okay previously right got it so they, so when we do that and that includes the four hundred thousand that we requested from the board of ed so that's that's what right right where we are to, on this discussion uh, the result is that if you go down uh, maintaining uh, reserves at uh, in 11 we're going to go down a little bit. Eleven. So we're basically keeping the reserve level essentially flat with the unassigned fund balance at June 30th, 17, where we expect to end. We go up about 200,000 in reserves, but we were maintaining a reserve level of 11.6, which is within the range of where we want to be. And that's as a percent of the. That is the budget that includes the three million dollars. Yeah, it's included. That's the percentage on the uh, in, inflated, if you will, budget that includes the three million dollars. In order to balance that budget, the taxes required from our taxpayers are eighty million two hundred ninety-three thousand in property tax. Correct. In order 
to uh, do that based on our grant list, we have to increase the mill rate to 39.38 for the town, plus 1.23 for the fire district, total of 40.6. That's a 6.09 increase in the town mill rate and uh, blended 5.89%. So that, that's the genesis of why we asked for the extra $400,000 from the Board of Ed. If we don't do that, you want to put in the $800,000 where the million two is? The number goes from 40.61 mill rate to 40.81, goes to 6.63, 6.41, up about half a percent. I guess we would put the hundred thousand back in too, because I don't know why we would ask the board of selectmen to be cutting from a budget that's what twenty five percent of the I think that's a, so do that the budget of the for education. Can you just take a hundred thousand out of that? So now we're at forty point eight six, and that's a six point seven six no rate, six and a half percent money. So I just want to be clear that if we did that, we're asking the taxpayers to absorb the entire contingency from the governor beyond what we did on the first round of cuts. If we look at the reserves, um, like when we're looking at the policy that calls for 10 to 12 percent, so if we were to take additional amounts in reserves, I know you've been hesitant to do that, yeah. um, but if, you know, I, I guess one of the comments that resonated uh, with me or several that were in the letters had to do with the short notice, uh, although we've been trying to anticipate this, it was, uh, and there was one letter in particular uh, from a taxpayer who said, you know, look, I think that notice is too short, it could, you know, undermine our programs. Uh, for the Board of Education that said, yes, I agree, there's some tough choices that should be made. We should be looking at potentially closing schools and, you know, more, you know, longer term solutions that uh, are more sustainable and that might be appropriate. And so one possibility would be use a bit more of the reserves now, but basically send a message of, okay, you've got a year. I think that's consistent with what you're telling us, which isn't that you couldn't have found $400,000 in savings if you'd had an opportunity perhaps to really deliberate and, you know, do a copious review, but you just didn't have that the luxury of time. So one possibility would be that I don't know what would happen if you, if you were to try to get us into the under 40 range, what that would require for reserves and where that would leave us, but we might be. So let's do that too. You can close to the, take, take another page. eight or nine or yeah, put another million dollars into Let's see if it gets mm. an additional million. Uh, I mean, take uh, let the reserves go down by a million dollars to 10.282. Mm. Now we're at 10.6 percent reserves. We're still over 40. What, where were we at the uh, beginning of the year or before this process in reserves as a percentage? At the end of last fiscal year, we were at 12.15 percent. Yeah, that's a change. Um, and of course, you know, the risk of using reserves is that that is, if the grand list doesn't grow to generate two point eight million dollars worth of revenue, yeah, you should be able to see with yourself a digger big hole. You're going to enter the year with a big hole. I've got religion on this. Yeah. <laughs> I believe, I understand that what it means. Now, I just don't know whether you give uh, whether you give the board of education a year or not um, to. To figure out how to accommodate what the governor is doing uh, versus imposing it now, I, I just don't know. It sounds like the Board of Education is pretty uniform that it will significantly impact the students uh, beyond the pair, correct? Correct, and um, unfortunately, our other members are traveling. Most of them are with work traveling this week, so they weren't here, but they are very um, concerned. About any further cuts? No, I'm just concerned from an overall community perspective that. Um, That's it, we're hearing from that, you know, you don't go anywhere without being inundated with 
No, I know, but we also have other people in town too to worry about relative to the overall mill rate. So, I, you know, it's a tough balance for us. I'm not going to tell you where to cut or how, you know, how, how to cut, but do we do we give them a year or do we approve budgets that will bring us under the 40 mill rate and hopefully, um, as a family, try to come up with some kind of joint sacrifice for the, the people who are are upset about the, uh, the potential increase of 6 or 7%. So, so my question back to, to you then, would, would the, the Board of Ed be, uh, have a plan of action to be able to save $3 million within a year? I think, I think in that kind of time, I mean, before we go there, we would know what really hits from the governor. So to continue to play scenarios like this is actually what we're going to see is tough too. I mean, if we'll be prepared, Kevin, to do what we need to do in a thoughtful way and be a part of the process, absolutely. But that's going to get some radical action, though. I mean, that, that? That, that, that will have to put a lot of things on the table that have never been on the table. Correct. And, but the, once we see the state, the state budget will make a big, I mean, it's very hard to work in such a nebulous sure. world when you're talking people and students and, and, and an and a economic drive, dive, driver in town. People come here. We don't want people to stop coming to Simsbury because the education is being decimated without... Yeah, I think we all have to that. I mean, that's one of the no, reasons yeah. why we... We move, most of the people move here. It's for the quality of life and the quality of education. That we're not questioning. Mm -hmm. No, I know. It's just, I know. It's tough. It's, just, it's balancing you know, the needs of the elderly, the people who want to continue to live in town. Um, <coughs> it's it's tough. Yeah. So that would give the Board of Finance very little room for reserves in the following year. I don't necessarily see the state improving in any way, shape, or form next year. So then we would have even less room to smooth it out if we were to do that. Yeah, I don't see a way we can even mechanically take a $3 million contingency for the state and get under 40. You know, so uh, you know, this, this uh, what's up there right now is backing off on the last 500000 from the town and the, uh, from the board of selecting the board of ed and doing it now you know, on the taxpayers and the reserves and, and 10.6 doesn't feel like the right number. So it's about 100 that. basis points difference for every million that we take it's out of that ball. <coughs> so if we took, so I'd be more inclined to say, you know, we're back to 11% reserves and we'll be at 40.5 of that. Are you going to add back about 500,000? So that's a lot. That's close enough. That's close enough. Seven fifty. So we're at forty point six. We're still about forty. Which so you're going to walk down the street? You, now you don't have to walk down the street and have everybody tell you you just raised my taxes by how much? Well, we haven't raised taxes in three years either. So unfortunately, that's that's another side of the coin. Yeah, I think we're just trying to, to maintain, I guess, a, a, a town where there's some some diversity <laughs> among our taxpayers and not just uh, all, you know, well-to-do people. So it's it's a tough one. Mm -hmm. Lisa? Um, first of all, I do appreciate the position you're in, especially Derek, who walked into this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for all your efforts, and we really appreciate how you have been collaborative with both boards and really reached out to us and I think it's been a, a collaborative and you know our cuts although we can't speak as a board you can ask us individually where we'd be comfortable with the 75,000 but we did support this unanimously and my salary thing was my recommendation not the board's just to clarify and I was insistent upon it um, so no fault on theirs they was they were mad at me but it was it was me who did that um, the one thing you do have an option of doing, which is a bad option, but they're all bad options, as we're hearing, right? Uh, I was just at the CROG meeting today, and most towns are considering doing supplemental bills because that contingency number is so unknown. We have no idea what it is. I, I appreciate the conservative um, estimate that you're putting in there. I think that that is absolutely realistic and reasonable, but it is an unknown to Tara's point. And a lot of towns would not even put in a contingency for a teacher retirement, but they did that before the governor's revised budget. And I think you are 
cautious and, and appropriately so that there's going to be some hit. But the question is, what should that contingency be, and how comfortable are you with supplemental bills? Yeah, so that's so, just... Yeah, so I had asked some questions about the mechanics, and I think I'll share those with everybody in the room. They, they were certainly shared with the board, and the town council um, helped us with these. If you put the uh, contingency in the expense, the $3 million, and that is what the budget that is approved, then if we don't have to spend that, we can't take it out of the budget. We, it, we, it goes into the general fund. So it, it, we, we can't, well, if we set the mill rate off of that and in July or August, they finally get a budget and it doesn't have any expense, it's all in the revenue side, then we're stuck with that level of uh, budget. It, uh, 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 that mill rate. We cannot lower the mill rate once it's set. I guess that's a better and easier mm -hmm. way to say it. Right. Um, if it ends up being all on the revenue side and optimistically it happens before June 13th, then we certainly can be we can adjust the program. Uh, but that's not likely to happen. So that's why I, I think it's appropriate that we decided to split this into two pieces instead of putting the full six million dollar impact into the expense because then you then you really and so in this way we are a little bit hedging that bet about uh, where it hits and whether it you know, it's possible that the whole solution has nothing to do with either revenue or expense it could be all sales tax and income tax I mean that was the early response. It doesn't seem to be what we're hearing right now, but it's going to be some combination of these items that are on there. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, you know, from from my perspective, we're looking at about a 10% uh, reduction in the total revenues that possibly yes. that are on the table, and we have the board of we have the board of uh, selectmen, their budget's going up by 2.9%. And then we have the Board of Ed going up by 2, almost 1.8%. If I add back in the non-lapsing account. So it's just not a matter of, of reduction, right? We're not cutting the budget. We're just not growing it as fast as people would like. You know, it's, um, and I guess it's tough to know if you don't know, reach uh, resolution on some of the labor contracts. Uh, that said, it looks like there is a tentative uh, CBAC agreement anyway that was in the paper where state employees are, I think, taking three furlough days and doubling their contributions for pension and other, um, and for health care benefits, co-pays. I think they're also, if I recall, um, agreeing to two years of no increases and also agreeing to for all new employees having a, a different pension plan that's a more of a combined benefit plan so uh, if that's a barometer for anything we're probably looking at uh, maybe some some changes in, in um, how arbitrators are viewing uh, some of these contracts because obviously our current system is um, not sustainable based on at least how Connecticut is currently operated and run. So uh, it's a tough one. I mean, and, and I know there are a lot of unfunded mandates um, that need to be covered as well from the state, so it doesn't make it any easier. You know, I don't know from a pain perspective, you know, whether you, you delay the pain. You know, I, I guess, you know, we had talked all together about not going over 40. Uh, on the mill rate that um, symbolically it's it's an issue. I don't know if, if uh, Moira and Linda want to weigh in or not, um, but I know they had had some pretty strongly held views as well at the last meeting. Uh, so I, you're all on mute, but I don't know if they want to. Moira texted me that she had to get off the call. Okay. Linda, you still on? She's somewhere in Utah. Um, well, so let's try. There, there is one other item we could do here, which is that we have gone back. Uh, we've gone from two to four to six on the contingency. So what if we did uh, two on the expense 
contingency instead of four or three excuse me That's right. and so this then would be along the lines of what Lisa was saying is that you know we we get in a, a budget approved the question is how material would the shortfall have to be for us to rationalize the supplemental bill or would we just suck it up in reserves uh, temporary. You know, temporary and then everybody would get hit hard next year uh, I, I am I, I think the one who has said I, I I'm, I'm not in favor of taxing today because so in hopes that we won't have to tax tomorrow right. uh, we should be we, sh we should have a justified but I think uh, I'm also now much more in tune with what Mora and Kevin were saying at the last meeting is that we are using reserves already to get to the, uh, the level of taxation. And so it's a very, very uh, much of a balancing act. Bob, in, ter in terms of the contingency, how flexible is that? Um, if instead of it just being four teachers, it's, it's, it's very just, flexible. We, so we have, so that's if it's three, okay, and, and they eat into it two and a half, there's 500 left. Can that be reallocated? Or maybe it can be reallocated, reallocated, and it can be it can be pushed. I mean, we it, we we can designate for the board of selectmen how it's used. Right. This we, Bob was very crisp on this. Mm -hmm. uh, we could put it uh, make a supplemental appropriation for the board of ed out of that. Okay, but that's a separate that's separate from the uh, budget that gets approved. Understood. Uh, you know, an item that that you know, if there's no impact, we would have the two or three million, whatever we decide. To we could just leave it in the budget, and at the end of the year, we didn't spend it. It goes into the fund balance. Mm -hmm. We could say we could use this to uh, for some other approvable expense at the board of selectmen, or we could say uh, use line item veto for the board of selectmen's budget, but we could appropriate for uh, make a, a supplemental appropriation for the Board of Ed. I think that should give both boards a little comfort in, if we did keep it at the three million and they only came back with one or two. Well, it, it might give them some comfort, but the taxpayers are gonna pay at the higher rate. Okay. So it's this is the balancing act. This is right this is this is it. This well, the, is where, the other where this is it. Use of unassigned common reserves go back to three hundred thousand? Yeah, wasn't that what that was where we originally started, right? It was, yeah. Thank you. All right, so now where are we? Uh, so I did two million for the contingency expenditure. Did you want to change the? No. Is that four million. For six That's a total of five. No. Now sixty-five. Well, if you do four, then it doesn't change the tax impact. So that's. I meant I budgeting meant, were you for, going from six overall impact to four overall impact. No, I was going, I, I was really just focused on the, so I've, I've gone from, from six to five. Okay. I wasn't clear on that, but. Then that's right. The, the, there's two million there in the contingent expenditure line. You still have three million in the uh, contingent revenue line. And then back to where we were, the, the full use of the Hartford uh, Reserve and then the 300 from my assignment fund balance. And because we reduced the overall budget by a million dollars, the percentage of the, you didn't change the amount of the reserve, but it's a slightly higher percentage on the lower dollar amount of the budget. So can, can you just estimate the, the full effect of the budget, not saying that it would happen, but say we did have to do a supplemental tax bill and it came in at the full $9 million, what would the, what would the tax rate look like? So what we so what we would actually do is we would do a one-time bill rate increase. Uh, it's a one-time tax, not increase. So it's a, it's a special tax. tax. So it's a tax bill with like a one, one mil value or one, one, one mil value. One, 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 one mil generating whatever dollars you needed to fill that gap. Yeah, right. It's optically different than right. raising it to forty-one. Mm -hmm. Right, but it's the same. <laughs> What is the, Correct. Um, what's the cost of the town? This year, um, approximately the cost of the town of issuing tax bills. We had to go that route. I mean, how much are we going to save? There's a lot of staff time involved, of course, but um, I think the actual mailing cost. I think the main number that Colleen estimated was thousand dollars. You do have you have you do have to understand though that that 
for the, the the part of that that is applied against the automobiles, the collection rate will probably come down. Probably. And then probably even the part that. So how did how do the mill rate play out based on what we're hearing right now? As you said you thought it was all so we're looking at the car tax. You mean the car tax at thirty six? So uh, John, take it away, sure. baby. <laughs> Um, so, right, so what we did get clarification that we didn't have at our last meeting was just that even in the governor's uh, last most recent worst case scenario, um, it, CCM did get back to us a couple days ago and say that the uh, requirement to drop down to 32 mills, again 31 for us because one goes to the fire street, um, but would go away in that scenario. So it's looking unlikely that, that what we used to call the worst case scenario, that they make us cut and don't reimburse us, uh, is very, very unlikely that ever so, so they allow us to use our our own mill rate against the cars, or would our it be own. What they said is reset back to the current statute, which is thirty seven mills. It used to be at thirty eight, you know, plus. So that's why I'm at thirty seven, thirty six to us, one to the fire district, which is which is now updated on this spreadsheet there. So so you included then here the amount that would you need to cover the gap between thirty six and. The, yeah, the revenue is at thirty. Is done at thirty six. Right. So the revenue is what the revenue. Right. Is. So what we, if they do the same thing they did this year, there was that money we got anyway, the two hundred twenty thousand dollars because we are still cutting, or cutting from where we used to be, thirty eight down to thirty seven. Um, but yes, it's it's now no longer the worst case. When we had the full estimate of ten point seven million dollars. That was assuming the worst case we had to cut with no. <coughs> That's better. Slightly. If we if we were to go with the five instead of six million, and then were to look at a fund balance closer to eleven percent, so we get ten or twelve, are we, we getting get close? I mean, it'd be nice to get under the forty. I just think it, it does make a statement. <coughs> right. Uh, my only caution with with that, I mean, it, effectively, it's the same thing. It's assuming less contingent revenue. Um, the higher we get that use of unassigned fund balance, the more nervous I get. Uh, but also, I mean, it effectively is the same thing. If you end up, you're, you're basically. Well, you're not cutting their budgets right now. You're not but, using, right. But you're giving them an opportunity, though, should there be a, a worst case scenario from the governor, you're giving the, the gift of time to say, okay, you know what? I mean, this board can say next year. Uh, we're not looking to increase budgets. They can provide guidance, and we're not looking to, you know, we're going to want to bring our mill rate back up to uh, an appropriate level. And so, you know, you give them more notice. What I'm hearing is that they don't feel that they had sufficient notice. I mean, the, the Board of Education just wasn't able to, to respond uh, in time to... So to, just to be clear, we're not going to set the mill rate or those to, tonight. The real question is going to be whether we mandate the. Yeah, but and, and you're you're appropriately asking all the right questions. We have to. But let, let's pass just our budgets, right? We have to pass our budget, yeah. yeah. So that that's really the question. It's all it, it, it's all in there. Let let's do what Jeff asked, which is go to eleven percent reserves on the ninety six million three hundred fifty four. I just want to see if that possibly gets us below 40. I doubt it. Four. So it's, yeah, so it's 39.99. The combined or? No, it's a little 40, 40, 40. 40. It's just over. It's so, over. Yeah. What would it take to bring that down? <laughs> We'll huh? <laughs> 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 cut the board of finance uh, to the direct member's salary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that. Yeah. yeah. Which is the same that way. Um, <laughs> so what does that represent? 103? Oh, that's it's, it's, it's $100,000. Yeah. 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 I don't, the other thing you can consider that I just haven't heard you discuss, and I'm not recommending one way or another, is the tax collection rate assumption that you use. Yeah. yeah. It's either that or it don't take from reserves, but it's just, it has the same impact as if we 
Right. If the rate is higher, we're not going to be able to rebuild the reserves next that's year. That's right. right. And so, there, so, what's, so that's, that's 10.9 reserves on a 96 million 354 combined budgets. In terms of um, mill rate sensitivity, am I correct that next year is a, an assessment year? That is true, rebound year, or the, the 19 budget we talked about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Um, I have heard that there is some correlation between the county mill rate and the, what homes are selling for in the value of homes. Just saying. Okay, so the real question now is this, we, we can move 100 other numbers, but the real question is we're given these sensitivities, how do we feel about mandating the 500,000 that we mandated last year, last week or not? I think it's the proverbial kick in the can, and next year is just going to be a, a real mess if we don't even chip in right now. Just, I, I mean, we're talking about 50 basis points on the board of ed and the I'm, I'm not sure what it was on the board of selectmen um, still increases as Kevin mentioned I, I like to look at it that way um, instead of drastic cuts we're still increasing both budgets that's certainly where I was last week and I I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to see the contingency at three million I guess my thought is I hate to see us have that much money we're collecting from our taxpayers without knowing. I almost would rather issue a supplemental tax bill um, so if, if so needed under dire circumstances. I feel like it would be justified if the governor gets his way and, and we occur. So there is, there is one other aspect of this. So yeah, the question, so I'm asking two parts of this. The first, let's talk about the contingency. If the contingency is $3 million, and we get to the time to set the mill rate, which is really only two weeks away, let's be real. Uh, well, it's almost not worth saying. Uh, <laughs> well, go ahead, finish. No, it, the, the, if we knew we didn't need it when we set the, or, or the, the wind had shifted so that it didn't look like we were gonna need an expense mm -hmm. contingency, we could, but we have an approved budget mm -hmm. that it has it in it. Right. We could ignore it down below, and it, because then, it, then it, we we in fact are building three million dollars worth of reserves. Right. With the expense budgets that we've approved. Understood. Yeah. So we don't need to do what we do did down below in terms of, we, if we knew we didn't need it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that's not likely to happen. Right, okay. So, I, I, it's, I, I think it's really a tough call whether we, we push for the reductions that are, you know, painful. I mean, I think, I think we're being relatively conservative. Um, I, I think that if, we're, if it's anticipated a 10% reduction in overall revenues that come in, and we're forecasting what are we forecasting? Sixty percent about that yeah. reduction. I think that's being relatively conservative, right? In our estimation, I think that the board of selectmen is not happy. I don't think the the board of finance isn't happy, and I think the board of education isn't happy. Um, the taxpayers I mean, are happy. R right. Yeah, it's, it's shared pain, is what yeah. it is. Uh, shared pain. Um, I get concerned that we're using too much in, the un in reserves, and it leaves us little room for next year. So when this crops up again next year and two more people walk out of the state of Connecticut, the, the budget continues to, to collapse. I, yeah, I, this, isn't, this isn't a one-year aberration. This is something that's going to come back next year. Yeah, I guess the, the only question is having the time to better digest um, the the impact and determining the you know the, the making measured decisions about the cuts. I, I just 
again, I look at um, you know, the letters we received and, you know, obviously quite a few from, from parents, uh, kids in the schools, and then from, um, you know, the, the community organizations. But uh, there were people that showed up to the public hearings as well that had their opinions. Yeah, exactly. They had their opinions. And so, uh, I, you know, I, I know... I know it's a difficult situation. I, I guess I, 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 I feel better if the Board of Education had come and said, you know, we, we, you know, we had contingency plans as hard as it was. We, you know, there are there are some areas where we believe there there are luxuries. But I think what I'm hearing them say is that everything is a necessity. And so, from a kind of Simsbury as one family approach, our elected officials are telling us, well, everything is necessity on the. Board of Education side and everything, but you know some changes uh, that the Board of Selectmen did in order to, I think, appear to be cooperative, but but telling us they're not desirable, are necessities. So, uh, you know, I hate to see us close the library on for, for fewer hours. You know, not be open as many hours because that impacts a whole segment of our population. And, um, uh, but but I, I I take it if. If the news came out uh, in, the, in the wrong direction for us, there would be discussions on this board and the other boards to do something that's a little more dramatic, a little more systemic, right? I mean, we, we'd have to probably look at our overall product and say, are we going to be just a, a community for primarily just the wealthy only and have an extraordinarily high tax rate? And, and for people who are in town who can't sell their homes, it's only going to get worse, uh, elderly and what have you, because the property values are going down relative to the mill rates. And we know that. We know that's what the realtors have been saying. We know people who aren't moving to Simsbury uh, because they feel they can get an education for their kids with good statistics, whatever they, those measurables are, albeit not the kind of private school education you're going to get the Simsbury schools, but then go to Avon and Farmington um, at a lower tax rate. But the homes are more. So as Lisa said, you know, we think the relative tax burden is still comparable because uh, because you get more bang for your buck in Simsbury, but unfortunately uh, that word's not getting out there. Uh, so I don't know what we can do better. I mean, I don't know if there are other yeah. metrics we can use for the, the school board to get out there to say, hey, look, <laughs> it may be that you don't see a dramatic uh, difference between uh, our statistics in, in, in Avon and, and other communities, but there are a lot of immeasurable, you know, other other factors to be looked at. I don't know. Um, people are already here, so they moved here for the schools, but I'm hearing it from a lot of people who are not coming here um, as much as they'd love to educate their kids in the schools because they don't want to pay the, the higher taxes. Well, if we decide, um, I appreciate that, Jeff. I, I think if we, uh, uh, the, Kevin shared with me some information about Glastonbury, and and again, we try not to do you know we do common size comparison of metrics on cost per student and everything else. But in facing this same difficulty, they uh, cut their board of ed budget by about three percent and froze it. And so, you know, they're they're saying we need to really come up with some fundamental structural changes to the way we deliver because we're, we're going to be facing increasingly difficult budgets from the state. So if, if you know, to me, the choices here are, say, look, you got to cut 400,000, the total 500,000, figure it out. We, we don't want to raise the mill rate. Or we say, we'll, we'll take the number as is, but we want, you know, the, we need a plan for next year that is radical in terms of measured in, in millions of dollars, possible cuts, million, two million, you know. And I don't know anything about this, honestly. I, I'm, 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 I, don't, I don't know what would be involved in terms of uh, doing that. But, you know, five elementary schools, a middle school with two grades, a high school all with their, you know, it's, it's, it's a great, great school system. But is that the most efficient way for us to deliver that great, great education that we have? Yeah. 
So I guess I'm uh, in order. I think the impact next year, you know, for the people that are involved, let's say there was a, a subcommittee that helped do that, Rob. For the people that were involved and, and interested in, you know, making it work, I think that makes a lot of sense. But to the greater Simsbury, the same types of letters that we saw and those people that weren't in it day to day, I mean, that's going to be a no. major shock. Yeah. So, I mean, the word is out that we instructed both boards to just try and give a little bit more. We did get some, some feedback, but I imagine that would be exponential next year if There's we kept no it the way it was right now. That's a good question. All right, so I'm looking for a conclusion to this. So <coughs> we have to move one or the other. So, Sean, can we just reduce the unassigned down to five hundred thousand dollars? So that's we're increasing how much we're going to pull out of reserves by two hundred thousand dollars, right? And that's then it's flat. That's completely flat now. The right. reserves. Um, and then if we just go up and and we added two hundred thousand dollars in reductions into the board of ed, and then add and fifty thousand in as a board of selectmen. And leave the contingency at two, and so the overall contingency. So if we is five, is is five. So if we reduce the contingency by five hundred thousand dollars, that gets us to fifty percent, which I'm not really that comfortable with. Fifty percent of the projected. That means we would have to send out a supplemental tax bill, exactly. right? If it did came in at the full number. Potentially. Right. Everything. Any. Right. Without any number. Well, and that's what they're doing in the state house, right? I mean, they're they're they don't know all the ramifications of all their decisions, right? I'm just trying to find something that um, is responsible, right, but and flexible, right? So, if you could reduce the, uh, would you reduce the revenue side or the contingent side, the uh, expense side? We well, want to do two and a half and two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half, two and a half. Yeah. yeah. It's not. I think it's more likely zero. to be revenue than. Yeah. No, going. Yeah, okay, yeah. You're more likely to be revenue loss? I think it's more likely to be two and four than it is. Or, uh, I mean, it'd be, I, I think it's more likely to be on the revenue side. Because they've already, Malloy's shown ECS cuts of. Sorry, his last budget was that. almost $4 million, right? Of ECS cut. And the first budget was how much, Burke? Two? Yeah, the first was two. Um, net one for the special. But then net, but then net, net one for the special. Net one for the special. Yeah. The second one was a little before. How come that didn't move it? Oh, he didn't do it. Uh, so in, in this instance, right, we're, we're asking the Board of Ed to give a little bit, the Board of Selectmen to give a little bit. And then the taxpayers to give a lot, a lot, and then we're taking some additional. I mean, we're using two million dollars in reserves. Yeah. So I, I guess I'd be in favor of that. You mean um, the combined mm -hmm. mill rate? Yeah, I'm just not. I'm just not in favor of combined mill rate going over forty right now. I just, I, I do think that you know, in a, in a year in which you know, we've got reval coming up, and. And I think the message it sends, you know, we have 10 to 12 percent, and we've got some discretion. I mean, it didn't move the Just a little worried about overtaxing. It didn't change it. I it didn't move the needle. I thought it was at 4015 before we adjusted the contingency. Did you recalc? Which one? Before you, you were at 5.17? Oh, so we were at 4.27, so it did move it down. About 15. Nice. It changed the assigned uh, rate yeah, yeah, by yeah, that one. The expenditures first, and then changed. I mean, the contingency stayed at $5 million, just covered. Right. So I mean, it's like a car you buy for thirty nine ninety nine, right? Yeah, yeah. What's the difference? But well, I know. I know it's psychological. It's something about, I mean, again, it's it's unfortunate. I mean, it's just the feedback I get from the number of people who are moving to the area. It's frustrating. Yeah. So, I, I mean, so go back. Fun. I'm sorry. I mean, I had, go ahead, Ron. I was going to just, it won't change the needle, but uh, yeah, I think it should be two and f two and three. 
I don't, that's not really, that's not, that's not driving the number that, that's, that's mill rate agnostic, but. Okay. Well, if then, you then put it at two and three. If it's, it's basically going to, it's going to. So then if we just, so then we're going to use another hundred thousand. What's that? If we use another hundred thousand on reserves. Is that yeah. Use another hundred thousand of reserves. Mm -hmm. Is it, is that enough? Probably 150. Maybe, yeah. Uh, Not, yeah, right, so that's not going to affect. That. I'd much rather just use that money for next year. Yeah. You may have to end up using some for for supplemental too. Right. I mean, we we don't know, or along with supplemental. Because I'd rather I'd rather go out to the taxpayers of the supplemental than than tax our taxpayers. I, mean, well, I think the reality is if it's we could do the math here, but if it's not. Uh, what what's two million dollars on our what would be the mill rate on that? If it was only two million dollars that we were shortfall, we'd we, be okay. huh? I mean, this no, no, but uh, above, above and beyond, oh, above, uh, above and beyond yeah. this, if th this is covered, we're covered here. If it came in, right, right. It came in at seven instead of five, mm -hmm. we probably would just suck it up out of reserves. I see. What and, and warn everybody that you know we're. Because the the hassle and the bill, you know, of, of issuing that bill, right? It's a it's a fraction of a mill. You no, know, I so know. And that that Dick Rizzo said that, Bob. You know, whether they give him one bill or two bills, it's still going to be over forty percent. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. I just I'm worried about the baseline. I'm just worried about you know the baseline increasing. Um, okay. Know, so to over the forty and because because it is there, and so now. Let's say it's not the worst case scenario. We've now collected a lot of extra money. Well, much? this isn't the worst case scenario, right? This is this well, is well, no. Good, but let's say it's, it's better than worse. better than half. We're going to lose because this is saying we're going to lose a little more than half of what the anticipation is, right? Yes. <clears throat> if we increase taxes on our on our folks by four percent. Five here, just under four and a half. Right now we're at four point five six, but if let's say it were four point two five, would that would that keep us? <coughs> oh yeah, that's the number. Uh, what what are you going to move? Can we put in um, the full the full five hundred on the top again and see what happens? But yeah, just do do it through. Five hundred up top. I, yeah. I just want to, what, whatever we take. Said. No. Uh, he's saying uh, go back up to the 500,000 between that we originally the Board of Ed. Uh, 100,000 Board of Ed, 400. Uh, I'm sorry, 400 Board of Ed, 100. Along with the increase in the uh, reserve. There it is. That's the number. So it doesn't move the needle, but it moves the needle. Right. To Terrace Point. Yeah. So that's the question. So what is that on, on their budget if, if you're looking at? So it's the full 500000 that we asked for last week. And if you put the two up top and the three on the bottom, that it doesn't matter, doesn't, right? It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's it's also the, the, two the amount of reserves that we're using. Where and we're, then right. it's also reducing the contingency by a million dollars. Right. 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 I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. I mean, we're, it's, it's less, it, it's less than 1% um, of the budget. Is that right? Of what's the, a, the, what's the less than 400,000 on right. 67? It's, it's 50 basically, half a percent. Right. It's, but it's cumulative with the delay of the junior high and, and right. 800,000. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. but it does still end up in a net ex increase in the spend at the Board of Ed, modest, about $500,000 from the previous year. And can you use the contingency that we've built in if the budget, the governor's budget is, yeah. or the ultimate budget is more favorable and we've built in a contingency and let's say we want to fund so, new organizations, let's say we want to get a, a, allocate more to the Board of Education. So, yeah, so this was, yeah, so this was what was clarified yesterday with the questions I asked. So, 
the answer is we can, if we don't need to spend the two and a half million dollars, we can save it for the fund balance. We can reappropriate <laughs> it to uh, Board of Ed if we want, or to the town for or the items that are split it. I mean, yeah. well, everyone or pro rata. Yeah. We, what we can't do is lower the mill rate right. mid mid year. Right, right. But you would want certainly to remember where the money came from you know on the way in which is it came from the taxpayers and from the board of ed and from the town so mm -hmm. the priority of how, what we do with the freed up money will should be reciprocal to the the way that we the, the pain that was born right all right do we have any newer information just at, to add to the story about um, the apartments coming online and how quickly that's that's going to um, help us? So we have the grand list impact that we gave to you um, from Mr. Rabbit. That right, that was, it's been, been a while. That's January. Right. Um, they are going through the zoning process. Was delayed as I understand it, but they're still on track to get it completed. Okay, they're helping to break ground this year, but I know we don't have any further updates beyond that. They're in the queue, they're in the pipeline. Yeah, so I guess, um, so, I mean, I guess, I mean, I would, um, I personally, I'm fine whether it's 40.15, um, or 39.98. It, you know, to me, it's it's kind of gets mixed in the number, so I would rather make a motion than really to reduce the board of edge budget by two hundred thousand dollars rather than four hundred thousand dollars, and reduce the board of selectmen by fifty thousand rather than a hundred thousand. So you're going to make that motion? I'm, I've made that motion. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Before we second it. <laughs> Before huh? anybody seconds it. Yeah. Uh, Are you uncomfortable with blending that with coming in midstream? I mean, we've got a 10 to 12 percent on the reserve as our. I look at it that we're you, we're oh, already okay. using two million dollars in reserves this year. Yeah. And we're going to have that. We're already starting two million dollars in the hole next year. So, you, so get, you get to have this. You get to have the argument about reserves and the mill rate one more time on the 13th. Yeah. But. But we have to. But, things, but, but we will have. We will have. We will have. Budgets. We will have locked the budget down, which we're trying to do tonight. We still publish. I mean, we we publish our revenue assumptions the best we know for the referendum too. So That's we'll, we'll, stuff. I'll need some guidance on how we're going to publish that when we're not held to it from a mill rate setting standpoint. But does it have a mill rate in it? It does not have a mill rate in it. It has a balance to be raised. Okay, but. Uh, I mean, it, I mean oh, from yeah. my perspective, the, the, uh, the $68 million budget, they should be able to find $200,000. I guess I, I mean, I, I mean, 200000 And it still works out to be about a 1.5% increase if we're including the non-lapsing account. So if I look at the past from th the budget year 13 through 17, the average budget increased by 1.5, 1.43%. So... That's keeping with their the prior four years of budgets. Well, I, I just I think in a I think it again I, I don't understand the economics perhaps as well as, as you all do, but I just I am concerned about in a year of assessments and, and what have you of driving that number over forty and it, 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 I just think a tenth of a percent isn't going to matter if the if the reassessment comes or not. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the that's and I I, I definitely echo it. I I don't want it to be over forty percent, but it's uh, not okay. being in, it's not being instituted by um, the board of finance, by the board of ed, by the board of selectmen. It's being really driven by the the state of Connecticut. Understood, but there are other towns that there are other towns that are going to show results a little differently than ours and, and and are still towns where they're attracting families to their schools and and, and again I don't want to get into line item changes but I'm just I'm concerned about you know I'd rather have the baseline a little lower than than over 40 and then next year you can I won't be on the board but uh, you'll be figuring out exactly you know what dramatic measures may be required if and to the extent the state says it's not business as usual 
I mean, we're not looking at any tax decreases at the state level, so all this is having an impact on our citizens and on people on fixed incomes who are getting less than 1% um, cost of living increase. I'm just, I'm concerned as a family that we're not making a shared sacrifice enough. So I would prefer if you're not comfortable taking it from the fund balance to to going up to 75 and 300, if that's what brings us brings us down. I mean, it's less than a, less than a, what is that, point, Oh four or something. I mean, it's it's so not, even, not even seventy five on seventy five on seventy five on four on the support of selectmen three hundred on the. And then if, so if the governor's budget, if, if it all comes to fruition, a little more favorable for us, there'll be money in the contingency to go back and refill us all. So we have a motion at this level. I don't think we have a motion. A we don't have a this, motion at what? this. Uh, not at this level. No. No. It wasn't second. It's what is this? This level is the seventy-five. This is the four hundred and four hundred. Oh, okay. Your motion was at two hundred and, and and the fifty, right? Two hundred and fifty, correct. So I'm just saying, what if we do three hundred and seventy-five? Where does that bring us? We're, we're, we're so can you just put that up there? Do three hundred on board of Ed, and then do seventy-five on board of Selectman. Where does that? 300 down instead of 400. It's going to be 40 inches. Correct. Uh, 75, 75. Yeah, if you took the, the fund balance and went to, I think 11.2 is certainly generous, right? Or 11.1 in your yeah. 10 to 12. I mean, yeah. I mean, my, my, what, only, what, what, my only thing with the fund balance is that effectively, what I was trying to say earlier is if you assumed a lower revenue contingency. You're, you're effectively doing the same thing. If we end up with a lower, I get a better number from the state, we're not really budgeting from fund balance, but in my world, when we're budgeting from fund balance explicitly, I just feel a little more nervous at that company. We're taking the fund balance down by what? $100,000? Did I do that math right? Yeah. Um, just just the eleven oh eighty two to ten nine eighty two is a hundred thousand dollars. Those two numbers. Oh, these two. Right. Just in dollars, right? It's a hundred thousand. Forget the percentage because we keep changing what we divide by. Right. Exactly. So that it's it's a raw number. So if you say you want eleven million dollars in reserves, a flat number, and you want to get the mill rate at thirty nine ninety nine, and it has well, you can't do that. Then it, then it has to come out of the expenses. So we we've been solving. We're down. You know, we're in that we're in that half a million dollar neighborhood right now, trying to achieve a level, and that's why it's important. So uh, again, I'll say my motion. So my motion is to reduce the board of Ed's budget. By two hundred thousand, and then reduce the board of selectmen by fifty thousand. And I will second that motion. Discussion. Discussion. I'm co I'm concerned about that. Um, again, I'll say it again. The reserve number that puts us two point one at the beginning of the next year in the hole. I echo. So whether it's 50 or 75 or 250 or 350, it's got it, like something. It's got to happen. Right. They've asked for additional time, so I mean that's implicit in what, right? What we're doing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm comfortable with additional time, um, but not, but but uh, I'm I'm only asking that we're under 40. I mean that's. And, and, and so however you, you want to pull it out that. you want to pull it out of reserves though right I, I, I frankly uh, feel like again we're a shared community shared pain I'm comfortable with however you you want to do it um, it's gonna hurt however we do it but I, I don't want to see us increasing tax it's again state taxes aren't going down senior citizens incomes aren't going up um, so you know again unless we just want to be a community of just the well to do I'm, I like to try to keep it under 40 maybe it's symbolic maybe it's not a lot of money, but um, you know we're not asking the board of ed to cut three percent like Glastonbury. 
we're not closing the library on Sundays or anything like that. Uh, I think we're just trying to come up with a shared shared pain here. I mean, I, I'm not going to tell folks how they would cut it, uh, but I mean, we see what's happening at the state level. I mean, you know, furlough days and for people uh, who aren't unionized and um, increases in, I mean, you know, these a uh, lot of dedicated uh, public uh, sector employees as well who are pitching in, right, to share the pain. So, um, all right. So, if we uh, sorry, do a straw vote on this budget, on this proposal or motion, I, I'd vote no. But Derek, I'd vote yes. I think we need four votes, though, right? Sean, do we need four votes? I think you need a quorum. And then you have a majority. 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 Majority
uh, it's one that we came up to get you your number. Is it private duty fund monies that come in when our folks work? I'll ask either overtime. the chief or Nick to speak to that. Private duty jobs, so when they get hired out, it comes into a fund. You pay the officers out of that fund, but sometimes there's a little bit built in. And in July, we changed it to $100 an hour. Depends on who you get as an officer, the hourly rate changes. So, so you cover so costs, and then there's an additional amount that would go into that fund. I see. So some of it goes to the officer, which which uh, they may get time to have for whatever it may be hourly rate uh, if it drives them over to 40. Yeah, those are over by, by union negotiate. Those are union negotiated costs that we pay them. Okay. And so um, that's so, so there's typically so that what would that money be used for otherwise in that special fund? Be used for something like bulletproof vests, which we just bought. Same thing on the regular budget, we took it out of the fund. This fund is the same. These are up beyond what we're looking for. That's the approval from the first selectman as well as the finance directors. So that the, um, just want to understand. So the money, the money comes in. Um, we pay the officers whatever their hourly rate is, and if it's time and a half, it's time and a half. Uh, they accrue toward pensions and what have you at the, at the higher amount. Overtime does not um, go towards pensions in Sims Ferry. No, it doesn't. No. Okay, but there's a cushion built in for extra funding for the town, for for, for these kinds of things like that. Well, I mean, I, then, then I mean, we have to make a decision. I, I, you mentioned, I think, uh, you mentioned the 35 on the uh, reduction in reserves from the of salaries. That was looking at, at this in light of the current state budget. Uh, that was before the current state budget, before we got the governor's uh, budget, and even before we got the governor's revised budget. And we obviously don't have the Democrats. Uh, before the mess, yes. But was there a consensus in the board of stuff that thir this 35.5 is reasonable based on kind of the, the assumptions that went into? I, I don't know. I mean, round? what we did is we tried to, you gave us a number we tried to get to. These are things we felt uh, we could live with given the constraints. They're obviously not ideal. I mean, we did not prioritize them, so we certainly could go back and do that, or you could, you know, add to the line items as you see fit. You could pull. The board members here, we can't give you a vote, but you could ask their personal opinions. Well, at the end of the day, if we had, if, if, if let's say we were 35 5 short, we, you could take the money out of reserves to fund an uh, operating deficit, right? Sure. Not preferable, but I would, I would advocate that 35 5, then we take that line item out, um, not pass it on to the referendum, so then you've got to find another. 14.5. Um, tell me, the, the elimination of the police clerk position, was that? So that was one overtime? we struggled with. Um, no, that's a police clerk position. As you know, we added the dispatcher position. So uh, it, it, we it, it, looked uh, at, when I went to the chief, I said, chief, this is the number I need you to come up with. Uh, this is something the Board of Selectmen, I did not have my in my original budget. The Board of Selectmen added it back. When we got down to 500000 in reductions, it didn't make the final cut. Okay. I, I think we're, aren't, aren't we saying that you have to reduce your budget by 50000 and you determine? I thought uh, that's what you were saying. Or you can make the line item changes right okay. now, which is what I think Jeff is. Okay. Well, I, think we, I think we have to because we have to approve the line items that will go forward to the referendum. You could, you could do the contingent option. Right. I would rather, yeah. Oh, we can. Yeah. Well, I thought you were. I thought you were balking at that. We figured it out. Okay. So my rule. <laughs> That's ten minutes. We'll never get back. I, I, was that, was I would that just invite Sean Askham, who is uh, Sean Askham is the liaison to the Board of Finance. So I didn't know if he had something he wanted to add to that. I had hurts too, but. <laughs> So I just looked at the budget book. So we reduced our contingency item from 70 to 35. So you can put that back up to 550,000 if 
and then we can choose to reallocate that contingency to more. But you do have to reduce the other line items right. that we asked you for. Yeah. But again, we can then choose to go back and fund yeah. at a, you know, as long as you know, yeah. But you got to come back to us, right? And no, 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 that's no. Right. our contingency. Those are our contingency. All right, fair enough. Well, I wish you guys would have the flexibility to do it. We do. So you have to, you have to take the recommendations we, we asked you for, and then we can go back and fund them how we so choose from the community. Yes, okay. That's the way I am. It works for me if we can get it into a resolution we can approve here before midnight. <laughs> we still have a meeting. We still have a meeting. <laughs> oh, fine. Seriously. <laughs> so then we can reduce the, pull out the, yeah, I mean, budget, if you, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, the Simsbury Main Street. Just take the thirty and the and the twenty. I mean, you could just take. Although you probably want to leave something in there, so do the thirty-five you know and doing? fifteen. I, on this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're, are you ready for the resolutions? Yes. Yeah, we have them. Okay. So uh, the only change is on, so if we're doing the, the resolved here, right? I'm looking at it. Where's the 50,000 increase we're gonna make? Uh, is this it? What page? We have to make a new line item. Should we be thinking out loud? Let's see. Do we literally have to read this into the, yeah, yeah. the whole thing? Oh, this is all capital. Oh. It's always the capital? <laughs> so, so we've already approved the budget then? No. No. So there, we have budget resolutions for Printing them now. Okay, because so um, I could just continue talking. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I think I am the senior member of uh, <laughs> present, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God, sign of love. Yeah. Six year, yeah. Well, we could we could proceed with yeah, the. Yeah, uh, I was wondering if, if we, we have just to read these in, Sean. Sean, why don't we just start? Well, no, no, we need to talk about the capital first. Yeah, so, there's, there's. Oh, they already made the changes, didn't they? Well, they took them out. I don't know. If they, <coughs> they took them out. I don't think that. Hey, Sean. Uh, we have to, the resolutions are final though for the uh, capital items, right? Can't we read so. those in the record now? Because those are you took out all the uh, made all the changes. Capital items. The ones that are before you include a prioritization of the support of selectmen set on Monday night to take out an additional five projects or modify additional projects. Some were removed and a couple were reduced. I think you better be careful. Uh, I think Lisa's not. She, uh, they all left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Uh, you, you didn't recommend removing those. You prioritized them. Is that true? Did you approve we, removing we those? Based on okay. what emerged tonight, and then we prioritize the list. I thought we uh, but we determined an amount for capital up to uh, six point eight. The items of five million three twenty nine for debt service and capital. Is that after cutting these that's, items? That's delaying the projects. As far as we can cut it to pay the debt service next year, plus the anticipated debt service and cash. So that's as far as we can cut it for fiscal 18. Removing any of these other projects um, gives you more capacity in the out yeah. years. 
but because there's no fiscal 18 budget savings. Okay. And they could be brought back for reconsideration next year? Yeah, in fact, that's what they they would be bumped out one year is the okay. discussion of where it's like. All right. So we're bringing our debt service down below <coughs> six. Down below six. Oh, yeah. No, in this scenario, um, on that budget, it's at about 5.38%. So we when we were doing the mill rate spreadsheet. You were putting debt service in at seven percent. Yeah. I thought I thought right. we were looking at six point eight. No, six point seven. So we had, since about January, to the beginning of this process, it was seven percent correct last year. Uh, entering this budget, part of what the board of selectmen did from uh, first like you know, first selectmen's budget then to the board of selectmen budget, they reduced in order to fit under that new six point seven percent cap. Um, they've got a lot of projects anyway. So this now moves it even further. But if, what I'm saying is if you move that debt service to 6.7, does that impact next budget year? It, move it to 6.7 percent? Instead of 7 percent. I mean, have you built a, haven't you built a factor in for debt service into the budget, what we're billing? Yeah, so then? last year, you're, oh, you're looking at the 7 percent here is because last year we had 7 percent. This got year it. we're at 6 as proposed right now, it's about 5.38. This is just a formula on whatever this number is included in the contingency. Um, next year, as we know, as we discussed last time, we will need to increase that line, if not next year, to the next year for sure, if these projects, Henry James and the others, stay as currently constituted. Um, we're going to eventually need to be back at $7 million in debt service. So it'll be a, you know, we can get back there over two years, but that was what we were discussing last time. We're at 5.3 million. We will need to Back there in two years. So, I what, what I'm asking is, what do we have to charge the boards next in next year's budget in order to arrive at the mill rate that was not this mill rate, but the 40.2 that was up there a few moments ago? In other words, what what are we charging the Board of Education, the Board of Selectmen? What do they have to contribute to, out of their budget toward capital in order to arrive at the budget? How much would they have to spend in order to get up to that 7%? In order to arrive at the same budget? Right. No, in order to arrive at the budget that we just reviewed. To it get was, back to 7%? No. The budget we're just looking at that we just deliberated over painstakingly for quite a while, we're charging each board money a capital contribution, right? No. Debt service is its own line. Debt service and capital are their own line. Their own line, okay. That's this line here. Debt service capital. And what is that? What percent is that? 5.48%. Now, it's 5.38%. So five, so we're looking at reducing 6.7 further to 5.38. Yeah, in this scenario. That's right. That's, oh. And we were, not, we, were, we were unable to do that if we didn't delay those two projects. So that's why those two projects are up for discussion. Right. We already decided they're going to be delayed. Right. But that doesn't bring down to 5.38, does it? It is that's, a that's big how part of that. Oh, okay. Because I'm looking at all these other. No, a million. No, the 5.38 includes its additional. It includes all these yeah, additional ones, right? Yes. Yes, the projects, right, except for the ones that. Right. Yes, that's correct. All those projects on that list are in this. Could still be funded at that 5.38. I think that's what you're asking. Right? They could be funded. They will be funded. They're, they're, yes, we have in our model. We can they fund do. those projects. Chris, is that that? Next year, Next year you're talking about. Who's in first? The ones, the, the projects that are left, that we that will be approved, are include funded in that five million three twenty nine. Correct. So then I'm not sure why they gave us all these other. Did you ask for it? That's what I was saying at the beginning. Is that just that. If you wanted to push those out farther, that's what I was saying. There's no fiscal 18 impacts. You still need the 5.329 million dollars. I get that. It would it, it gives you some capacity relief next year if these are bumped out multiple years. But you're, you only ever approved one year of capital projects. Anyway. So, so you're not why we would defer maintenance further. Um, but. But it's not going to not going to impact our mill rate next year. So. The only way that it does is, is to the extent you're prioritizing not just over one year. <coughs> if those projects were less priority than the two big ones we moved off, for instance, you might 
considered not feasible. The street lighting purchase lighting improvements, for example, I thought that was netting us. That's not a spend to save. Yeah, spend to save. So those, those were additional lighting that would be for Simsbury Farms. Yeah. That's right, the so phase not, two of that. It's not a spend to save. It's not spend to save. It's a different program. Okay. I just I remember when Jeff went through all these, it was a lot of uh, mm -hmm. So do we have the motions then? Maybe. I don't think we, we do. do. We do. Well, What's that? Computer's not collect, connecting to the right. on the channel. Couldn't they just bring the laptop into the room and yeah, use a wire and hook it up? Yeah. Can we That's have a drone for this? <laughs> yeah. Robot. So should we talk about this stuff maybe and try to get through this? All yeah, we plans? should. Um, so let's let's talk about the the prioritization and the the delay of those projects that you prioritized. So. So as we understood from you, you were looking for biggest bang for the buck. So we looked at some of the bigger numbers that were out there. We asked Jeff to con he was our town engineer Jeff Shea to consult with department heads as to what could they delay without devastation or uh, stuff. As we consulted, though, with Sean and uh, Melissa, we saw that there wasn't going to be a budgetary impact for the current year. So we did not have consensus. We didn't actually take a vote on this, but we accepted uh, Jeff's prioritization list. Okay. Some, some members were comfortable delaying it for a year. I think Sean was. Sean. Yeah, I can just speak to, to your concern about priorities and close and everything else. If you approve that $3 million on the prioritization list tonight, you have to go to bond for it at some point and you have to pay for it. If you delay those, then you have the additional debt service capacity without it being linked to a bond in an out year, which can potentially give you more flexibility, which you can then ultimately pay cash for these projects or choose the bond. And this is just my, my opinion of, 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 of how that works. But, we, we, we did update the cash flow schedule for the capital to, to show that, and, and it, I believe it drops the required capital spend to $4 million, um, in fiscal 19 from down from the 5-3. So, again, it's a matter of what kind of flexibility do you want, where do you want to allocate the capital in the next two years. Because if you agree to approve those tonight, you're locking us into another $3 million worth of bonds, which is fine. We can afford it. But, but, but. I guess I'm, I'm a little confused because when we ask you to look at kind of what's necessary, what's best for the town, <clears throat> you came up with a timeline of when things ought to occur, and I'm 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 a little frustrated now because you're asking we have a we have a guideline relative to we went down to 6.7 percent uh, for the coming year. We previously were at 7%. Now you're taking it down to under 5% saying if we want to do that, which isn't our policy. And now in a vacuum, I'm looking at this, and how do I know, for example, uh, on some of these items that are crossed out, whether parking renovations, for example, have safety uh, impact uh, on our senior citizens? How do I know? Well, I hope you would trust our town engineer and department heads and the Board of Selectmen. We make those policy calls every time we make a recommendation. I'll, I'll ask Sean to weigh in as well. To be clear. You gave us guidance at the last meeting to cut the Henry James project and to cut the senior center, which gets right. you to the five three. Well, you all that uh, we we you guys put that on the table as I think uh, we all we, we all agreed about that. We all agreed yeah. about it. It wasn't simply us. It was I think the Henry James solution. Well, we thought we could wait a year. The point is, is that these additional prioritization items don't change next year's capital spend. I understand that. I said before. It gives you flexibility in future years where you want to allocate your capital. And, and I think I think Chris put it nicely at the Board of Selectmen meeting where, I mean, with the budget, um, you know, uh, dare I say disaster, but um, it kind of brings in a new paradigm of what is important. Right, and that kind of that's what we that's what they're under the impression is that they have to review all the all the projects. Is that a fair assumption, Chris? We're just buying a year to. No, to I know. I guess I just I, I would appreciate if you guys had voted on it. That's right. Right. It was in response to the request that you, the additional request you made a week ago. So, 
then the, we had had Jeff has been working with department heads regularly on this, so we did have him. And it's not like we took these off. It's, we did not say we didn't take them off the capital improvement plan. These are things we still think we need to do. If the pool really breaks, we're going to have to fix it. <laughs> we're hoping it won't. Jerry thinks. I mean, Jerry's driving a 1980 car, so he's pretty good at with a wrench and a hammer. So we'll do our best, but you know, like everything. And you know, the town master plan, this was something the long-term planning committee recommended it was <coughs> moved last year off this year. So we'll end up continuing to be uh, reactive instead of the proactive. I mean, these are all things that have value, but by putting them off one year, Sean is right. It gives you some flexibility in the out years to Derek's point. Uh, which is look beyond this year and where are we going to need capacity and is it going to get worse? So it, it's more about out years and pl anticipating out year uh, problems. Okay, well, I, mean, I, 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 I appreciate that, but I hold to my original point, which is that I would I would appreciate um, when you do come in that that we we not have kind of a new reality just because of what the governor did, but that we look very carefully at what are nice to haves and what are really important, so that we're not overtaxing our current taxpayers. If the pool can wait for two or three years, that's fine. If it breaks this year, we're going to end up spending, uh, you know, instead of nine fifty, but one point one million in the end, that wouldn't be prudent. So I mean, I, I guess I'm looking to the board of selectmen to tell us. Uh, and as long as we're in the guidelines, I feel more comfortable. So I just I wish you all had voted on specific items. It would have. You didn't vote. You you said you accepted the report from the town engineer, but you didn't vote on. The well, we did have a thorough discussion. We just didn't take a vote because you asked for the prioritization. So, and there was extensive discussion of the list. And it, I mean, Kevin was there. I think he, we didn't take this lightly Correct. and I do want to give actually kudos I mean kudos to Jeff Shea who is a phenomenal engineer and worked closely with staff this was not done on the fly this was done over months with, with uh, the way I, the way I interpret the moved out at the, at the outset of this right. Right. All, of them, all of the tough decisions have been made before this so the, they worked hard to come up with a priority list for you I mean they have the, the the right. cap of the CIP budget, which they've outlined, right, but because of things have changed, we've asked them to reprioritize, and they've said basically these items, if something has to be pulled, pull from this starting. In this order. In this order. For yeah, one year. Where, you know, right. you don't vote on the CIP plan. Just you vote on down. projects each year. So from the Board of Selectmen's perspective, it will remain on the plan, but nobody has to take a vote on it until next year. Correct. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to do the resolutions. Do the resolutions. So <coughs> one last thing I would ask is um, back to what we were saying about the revenue contingency. Right. Um, because you would ultimately need to be, you, if the revenues didn't come in or the expenditures where you needed, you would need to, you could do a supplemental appropriation from reserves anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessary to say we're budgeting a use of reserves that six hundred thousand. You could, you could, in kind, just reduce your assumption on revenue contingencies by six hundred thousand. You still have the option to budget. This is optics. Reserves. I mean, it's a little bit of optics, and it's a little bit of. We just had a ratings call yesterday <laughs> to not be saying we're budgeting use of reserves because technically, right now, we don't know if we're going to even have to do that because really, when you budget a use of reserves, it's it, the reason it's a, not an advisable thing to do is when you have known expenditures. We, in this case, already have a level. of Unknowns in both the expenditure right. and the revenues. Right. So I would personally prefer that we move that six hundred thousand offset. It with the That's fine with me. If everybody's comfortable with that, it just at least we're having that. Just, just, just calling a reserve something different, but it's the same impact. Right. Municipal right. accounting. Yeah. I love fund accounting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I will read these. You know what you're reading? I mean, do you no, oh, you're I'm working reading, that one I'm up there. Okay. okay. All right, first. Okay. So uh, we had a we need a motion to approve the 2017-18 Board of Selectmen operating budget in the amount of twenty-two million six hundred and four dollars and six hundred four thousand nine hundred ten dollars, re reflecting an increase of two million four hundred twelve 
$1,105 from the budget as presented at public hearing. Is that correct? Uh, the the increase of $2.4 uh, million, I don't necessarily think that's right. That includes the uh, the contingency. Uh, it's 604 and then plus the 2.5 would be 3.1. So the way this motion is read, it's, it's from the budget as presented. Okay. The public hearing. Okay. So you could you could modify it. We could, we could give you different numbers if you want to say it as compared to seventeen. It's either way. This is how you did it last year. Either way works. The the, the big numbers. Whatever the right way, right way is to do it. Uh, <laughs> I just, all right. So so, so, so uh, that. all right. So Mr. Peterson and seconded by I'll second Mr. Perel. And all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll vote in favor. All right. So uh, it was for all four votes. Unanimous. All right. The next is made a motion to approve the 2017-2018 Board of Education operating budget in the amount of dollars reflecting a decrease of $1 million from the budget as presented at public hearing. So moved. Moved by Mr. Prowl. Second. Seconded by, by Mr. Blumenthal. All in favor say aye. 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 Four, four, okay. All right, next, made a motion to approve the 2017-2018 non-public school operating budget in the amount of $544,266. Motion made so, by so moved. Uh, Mr. Peterson, seconded by second. uh, Jeff Blumenthal. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, made a motion to approve the 2017-2018 uh, debt retirement operating slash capital budget in the amount of $5,329,825 reflecting a decrease of a million ninety-nine thousand. $330 from the budget presented at the public hearing. Moved move by. So moved. Mr. Prell, second. Second. Second, Mr. Blumenthal. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Unanimous. Made a motion to approve the 2017 2018 capital non recurring fund budget in the amount of $1,026,064. Moved by. So moved. Mr. Prell seconded. Second. Mr. Peterson, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, none. Made a motion to approve the 2017-2018 sewer use operating budget in the amount of $3,553,972. Moved so by moved. Second. Peterson and Blumenthal, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. Made a motion to approve the 2017-2018 residential rental properties operating budget in the amount of $42,745. So move. Second. Michael, pro. All in favor say aye. Aye. Made a motion to approve the 2017-2018 Simsbury Farms Fund operating budget in the amount of $1,967,955. So move. Moved by Blumenthal. Second. Second by Prowl. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Uh, the, made the following resolution. I'm going to read the whole thing. Uh, pursuant to Section 808 of the Town Charter, the following motions were introduced to the uh, special meeting of the Board of Finance on May 24, 2017. Be resolved that the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes <coughs> of paying the expenses of the Board of Selectmen annual budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018 shall be approved and implemented in the amount of $22,604,910. Be it resolved that the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of the Board of Education annual budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018 shall be approved and implemented in the amount of $68,125,170. Be it resolved that the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of sewer use fund, sewer treatment plant, residential rental properties, Simsbury Farms special programs, non-public schools, debt retirement capital, and capital non-recurring annual budgets for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2018 shall be approved and implemented in the amount of $12,464,827.
in accordance with sections 406 automatic referendum and 808 duties of the Board of Finance on the budget of the Charter, the recommended operating budgets will be submitted to a referendum in the following forms. Questions for the referendum ballot. One, shall the appropriation recommended and approved uh, by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of the Board of Selectmen annual budget for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2018, be approved and implemented in the amount of $22,604,910. Question two, shall the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of the Board of Education annual budget for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2018 be approved and implemented in the amount of $68,125,170. Question three, Shall the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of sewer, uh, sewer use fund, sewer treatment plant, residential rental properties, cemetery farm slash special programs, non-public schools, debt retirement slash capital, and capital non-recurring annual budgets for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2018 be approved and implemented in the amount of $12,464,827. I'll move the resolution. Moved by Mr. Blumenthal. Second. Seconded by Mr. Prell. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> no. So now, a couple of uh, longer passages here. So there is a motion that's actually on the bottom of that page in the way of reading the full text of this resolution. Um, but I wish to talk about it. I was struggling to understand it because then you've got some items that are crossed out, some items that are in red. And on the prioritization from Lisa, you have six, five, six, seven, you know, identify six out of, I mean, you already have Henry James, but like open space planning and improvements is in red, 140. I'm not sure why. So, so, right, right so I can explain, right. So wait, because we didn't know which, which of the prioritizations you accept, um, everything in red has been changed from what was presented to you already. Um, I can go down each of them, but these, and then the ones that are crossed off, assume that you, when we were printing this, it assumed you would cut all of the things that were on our page. Right. We have other versions of this that we can easily print and hand out where we unstrike those. It's not, so just, it's, just to be clear, if we unstrike them, they have to go back to 2008. That's right. correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So if you'd like, we can, you know, we can very easily print another version of that. But in any of that, the open space planning improvements is still going to go forward, even though it's in the red. And that's the open space that was reduced under option B or A, I believe, from from ten thousand by ten thousand dollars by the board of selectmen. That was already absorbed. That's why it's been in our discussion. And then all the others are to, if, they, if they're red and have a line through them, they've been taken out. If they're red, right. they don't have a line through them. They've, they've been reduced, including Henry James, for instance, in phase three. You'll see is on there and stricken because right. they had. So we can. You can tell us what works easiest for you. We can print it. It sounds like, from what I'm hearing, that the Henry James and, and the Senior Center are being done. Um, the others, as the Board of Selectmen for next Monday night, are not, are, are to be included. So, yeah, so let's have a discussion about that. So just how much the two uh, million works into the capital budget in our years. So what is $2 million equate to? So operating operating so $3 million, right? To in the operating budget? For right. Like how much debt service does that bought now? Roughly. Yeah. So it you mean the mill rate impact of that? No, not the mill rate. Just the dollars? Just how much? Well, three million. Well, we financed it over ten years, so three hundred thousand. Right. So by not approving these projects, it affects the operating budget. Gives us capacity, as Sean said, to right. either replace some of other projects later, right? But again, that assumes they're being completely eliminated. I mean, a lot We're not of taking them off the list. Out on the list. I okay. refuse. Right. What? So they're not being eliminated if, if, if they're, the discussion was not eliminating these projects from the right. capital plan, it was about delaying them. Right. So it's not a simple, here's going to be the impact, 300,000 in your case, 
case unless you're fully eliminating the plan. It, it is, mm -hmm. capital is a strange world. And so we have this five-year CIP plan, and you see it, and our board votes on it, but you don't. You only vote on one year. So from your perspective, it is being eliminated from this year's voting consideration if you do that. From our perspective, we will keep it on the capital improvement plan in the next board when they evaluate what projects to put on. Some may make the list, some don't. Part of the problem without having a town-wide master plan is you end up being reactive and the pool needs it, and so that moves up or something else happens. But from your perspective, you're just voting on one year. So if you take it off this year, you've taken it off this year. It doesn't mean from our perspective we're not going to consider it later, but you don't even have to decide that tonight. I guess I, I guess I, I would I'd want to see uh, the town facilities master plan um, go forward go forward because I, I really like to have a better sense of of prioritization that that maybe is more precise because as I understand you've got to find your capital plan right and so when you came up with that capital plan last year and there were items on there and now we're looking at some of these items now, what our town engineer has said is that some of these things don't necessarily need to be within that five-year period. Maybe we could delay a year and it could be in a six-year period, right? Because uh, we're looking at it now and it's not, these aren't essential. It's not critical that we have an appropriation by the taxpayers for these right now because it's not as dire as we initially thought it was. We can go another year without knowing the money's been appropriated for that, right? So Under the current budget circumstances, being as draconian as they are, we've taken a really hard look and what we thought was maybe essential maybe isn't quite as essential as we thought. So as you call the way the process works is when we started, you give us the guideline of what the debt service line you want us to come in. And so we met that. And then we asked for prioritization. And we gave you the prioritization. Then you requested further reduction. So we were just following the process that you had set. You know, we always evaluate whether we need it or we don't. We, there is value in all of these projects over time. It's about preserving assets, planning to preserve assets, maintenance. So I guess what I'm really unclear on is what do we have to do about the, the recommendation to prioritize tonight? You don't have to do anything. You can either look at it and say, great. You can say, yeah, take them all off, and then they're all off for this year. But you're, you won't see any savings this year. But you can do that. And and you put on the Derek cat and say, okay, no savings this year, but it'll come down the road. But it's, it doesn't impact So would you rather year. we take them off or we leave them on? They didn't vote in that. They only accepted the plan. We What we did is we followed your advice to prioritize. I mean, if you take them off, we can live with it. If you don't. So you're trying to tell me that I'm supposed to know why we asked you to prioritize them and make Pretty them much. <laughs> I mean, I, I, at the time you asked, I thought you were looking for additional savings. When we did the prioritization. No, no, yeah. yeah. All kidding aside, I, I thought given how difficult the things we are doing in town, uh, at the Board of Ed and at the Police Department and at Simsbury Farms and everything else on an operating side to turn around and, and put up something else. Joan's still here, you know, new, new kind of squirts or what, you know, whatever. How was that going to look? You know, in terms, of, and that's why we asked. That's yeah. why I asked for the prioritization. And it's an appropriate is, question to ask, especially in light of the changed economic conditions. You know, if you think about where we started the CIP last year, we started out. Already our board, my recommendation to the board recommended moving out 17 million. Then we've got the 5 million of the senior center and then the 23 million from the board of ed. So that's, I, I'm not, shots my math, 40 million or so. Um, so that's sort of, and then you came back and said, well, reprioritize. And we asked Jeff Shea to work with our director of finance and department has a where we could do that, but because of the way you fund and when you bond and how it times out, you don't necessarily see a savings in the current year, right, which right. I, we thought really that's what you were looking for. It really builds $300,000 into the operating budget in but 19. In the, right. Uh, 19 is what 20. it does. So, yeah. so if things continue to worse, that's what we're really voting for right. and talking about. You're thinking more, if you're doing this not for this year. Correct. That the initial impression we had was you were looking for savings for this year, but there it is a perfectly valid uh, option for you to think about out years, Prashant's uh, perspective, and plan ahead. So I don't think you're, 
you've asked anything that's unreasonable or something that isn't worth thinking about. Uh, and I think our board understands that. And, you know, we did work with Jeff Shane. He felt that this, we could accommodate this for a year. And then, you know, maybe some fall off and maybe something new comes to the forefront. So, so, so I guess it would just it would be helpful to know if you all would prefer to have the flexibility because I feel comfortable with a 6.7% capital, you know, a target for capital expenditures to ensure that we maintain our assets and we don't defer maintenance unnecessarily only to incur more costs later. And so that's what I was saying earlier. I, you know, I'm comfortable with 6.7%. I understand the prioritization. I thought we were looking at a blend of if we were not able to save enough money out of the operating, we might want to go further. I, but again, it's for the out years anyway, not for next year. So, uh, but you I make mean, a good point, Jeff. Every time you move a project out, costs go up between 2 and 4%. Right. But to, to Sean's point at the Board of Selectmen meeting, he's you know seen projects come and go numerous times, and they get reprioritized based off of current conditions. Right. It's tough for us to know now, based on current conditions. I mean, if if, if you had a vote saying we would like the flexibility because we think some of these things could come off altogether next year and we'll need the money for something else, then I'd say, great, we won't appropriate the Jeff, money Jeff, we now. did not recommend that. Um, okay. You know, as okay. you know, our recommended budget to you had those included. We were, we did. So let's leave them on. I'd prefer leaving them on. Let's them. leave them on. And Joe, I don't negative. think you'd quibble is with that, the uh, Is that the right points, thing right? to do, Sean? I'm, I'm confused, no, I'm honestly. If you leave them on, you have to increase the debt service line next year. If you take them off, right. you don't necessarily have to increase the debt service line. We gave you the ability to be flexible if you want. Right. We're still going to recommend capital. Okay, well, I mean, we. we I feel a responsibility to maintain the town. There's our priority for how we can contribute to maintain the flexibility. We can certainly take those items if you want to give them to us. But recognize that you will have to increase the budget next year if you give them to us tonight. And that's fine if we're willing to do that. But your 5.3 is going to go up to 5.6 or 5.7. And then it will escalate to 6 as you continue to approve bonds and projects down the road. If you don't want that to happen, then this is our prioritization. That's your choice. Like, I, I, I don't think we should be deferring maintenance, and I think that's an invitation to defer maintenance. Um, I don't have the same level of understanding on these that you do. I think it's great that you're giving us that discretion, but frankly, the discretion that that we've exercised is a 6.7% target, and we ask you to stay within that, and you have. Uh, if you're telling – if. And, and Lisa yeah, just said, if you want to draw, if you want to draw the dare card, okay. Well, I don't really want to draw the dare card because I don't want to spend more money later to maintain assets. I don't know what to do with this. So the, another option, you do have all the board members here. We cannot, as a group, deliberate, but you can pull the board if you like. Okay. As in, and they can speak for themselves and not as a vote. I, you know what? I it's nine forty. I. I I would rather not go through these one at a time. I don't think that's a good use. I don't want to go through one at a time, but I'd like to know: Do they they want to have flexibility to s supplant these other projects next year based on the engineer's recommendations? You want to have that flexibility, Chris? No, I just let me give you my interpretation of the wisdom of the vote. Okay, um, did we debate the pros and cons of taking them off? On. There's there's pros and cons both ways, and I think different members would have voted differently on that. Mm -hmm. We made a decision that, to a very large extent, whether it's wise to take them off or not, is very much dependent on the conversation on the on the chart tonight. All the you know all the options relative to getting where you want to get to with the mill rate. So we didn't recommend doing it. We didn't recommend not doing it, which means we're comfortable with. As you look at what you need to do tonight, if you need to reduce capital, these are the ones that we're suggesting that you do. And we were very comfortable with that. So it actually isn't inappropriate to, I thought the wisdom was to defer to you, based on the discussion tonight, whether you feel you need to do this or not. We weren't recommending doing it. We weren't recommending not doing it, which means we're comfortable with your discretion. If you're confused as to why you were even asking about it in the first place, then I think, you know, that I just bring up the to me, we're building in flexibility in right. out years. And that's what, what we're trying to accomplish. We're using $2.1 million in reserves today. 
right? If we didn't approve, if we don't approve these, we build in an additional three hundred thousand dollars in twenty nineteen, right? So things continue to progress to get worse at the state level. That gives us additional flexibility. That's not to say if the things to come back better, right? Then they can come forward with the projects. What they put forward, from my understanding, is pr is projects that aren't necessarily need to have. Uh, I, I, well, I don't know that I'd go there, but they they can be delayed a year without right. detrimental impact. Some of them, the pool is going to have to be fixed, or we got to close Correct. the pool. Yep. That is an absolute need. Yeah, you know, we're uh, we're looking at segments of the population that you know, rather see greater rigor, I guess, in, in the out years on, on operating um, rather than defer maintenance on, I mean, the, the, how many people use our library a year? Oh, a thousand a day. A thousand a day. So parking renovations are going to benefit a thousand people a day, right? So a thousand a day is a lot. Well, I'd rather not defer that. Six. I'm sorry? That's why that was listed as a six. Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather not defer maintenance on these items, and I'd rather, if you need to come up with $300,000 next year, I'd rather you figure it out elsewhere than deferring maintenance on things that will only cost 2 to 4 percent more per year in order to fund it. So I appreciate that, and it's certainly good food for thought. I mean, it, it, just in terms of the different roles of the two boards, we're the policy board, and so these were the policy calls we made in consultation with the director of finance, town engineer, town staff. All of our town staff was consulted. Uh, I, you know, so they are, these are things that they can live with. I'm not going to tell you, I mean, right now, if there's a crime and evidence needs to preserve, be preserved, it's out in a tarp. That is not good. So that needs to be done in the pool. I mean, all these things do need to be done. We were just trying to give you the flexibility, given the uncertainty of the governor's budget out there, if you want to do it over time. I think Chris made the point perfectly well. We know you're in a hard spot. We're not recommending or not recommending, but we're giving you this flexibility, and here's what we recommend you do if you choose to take it. Let me just take the top three off and leave the bottom three off. We just need a motion of some sort. Make a motion, Derek, and it'll probably pass. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, so that gives us about an additional $152,000 I mean, in flexibility is what that it Just, just I, keep I, them all on. I, I mean, what, what, let's, what, let's talk I, about I, it. I, I just moved to keep them all on. We're within our debt service. It's $300,000. Uh, I would think that we can be more creative in the out years and rather than deferring the maintenance an additional year when it's a dare card. I mean, as Lisa said, we may have to repair the pool. We've, be, we've done our best guesstimate of what we think nature is going to do to our pool over the coming year, right? I'd rather not defer it for another year. And, um, so All right, make I a motion. Move, to I move, I'd move that we, we move ahead with the resolution uh, on on the items, uh, deleting only the two that were already agreed upon by the, for the Henry James Middle School and the, um, so the just to clarify, right, as presented last time, the Senior Center, the senior center. the plan of keeping 300000 in fiscal 18 budget, deferring 505, not deleting the So that's how we have the resolutions. Right. Those, that one is fair. It's actually, is a name change to Eno Hall renovations. So you make that motion. Well, I guess the first motion we should we should make is that we waive. Uh, where is it here? Well, no. Let's let's, I'm let's reading of all these items. Huh? Yeah, well, so I'm going to be reading all these. Right no, we're going to do that after we decide exactly what we're going to do with these. But let's let's, uh, let's have a motion about the priority list and whether we're going to take those off or not. So your motion is to leave them on. Yes. And with the clarification that the senior center is as we had discussed previously all right the three hundred thousand stays on so that's your motion and i need a second <laughs> I, I hate a party line vote i'm the only democrat <laughs> <laughs> i'll second the motion 
the purpose of discussion. <laughs> what do you think, Kevin? What, what's on your mind? I mean, I, again, I think it kind of builds in a little bit of flexibility yeah. down the road yeah. in 2019. There's $300,000. And I take Jeff's point very valid, right? And Lisa's about the uh, you know the pool maintenance and whether it happens today or tomorrow, but not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. If it does, gives us a little bit of flexibility. It's not to say that we can't come in and and fund it down the road. And in and, and, and all fairness and candor, my wife and I have the same debate. Okay, we're going to hold off another year on the roof and we'll deal with the <laughs> ice dams because I'll deal with getting the snow off the corner of the roof and what have you, right? So we can push it off for another year uh, as she sees fit. And, uh, and I say, no, I think we should just... Uh, we, we should do it because it's only going to cost more to do it, 2 to 4% more a year in the out years. And we're going to sustain damages in the meantime. We're going to increase maintenance costs, which is my time and energy. So I have the same debate with them. So, uh, so you got to wait another year, right? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if my wife was here, she would answer yes. Uh, <laughs> We have to wait another year, but I'm just not a believer in deferring it. But that, that's okay. I mean, well, do you, do you want to do? Do you want to split? Do you no, want to split? No, no. Up? You guys have majority. I'm comfortable. Uh, you well, guys, it's, it's I, I, I'm willing to talk about it a little bit more. Not not too long, yeah, Rob. I know. I know. Too much. More. Like the masters for town master facilities master plan. I feel like that's something that will really inform future decision making how to manage all of our assets. Right? We don't have the staff to do it. Uh, it's the top items. It's the second one in. That would get eliminated if we eliminated the first three. So, I don't know. But I'm not here next year either, so you guys are the ones who are going to have to. <laughs> so, in, Kevin, you would say take them re take them all. Uh, yeah. Or you, along it's those being, I think we could. Okay. Um, you get to give us more flexibility. You think it gives us more flexibility? It, I think it does give us okay. more flexibility, but I understand Chris's point, spot. And, Chris's point and, and Sean's point. I mean, but if the pool breaks, it'll be on you. Correct. <laughs> well, I live close to it, so hopefully I will up a hill. I would say just go ahead and um, take it. <laughs> no, I'm gonna. I would say leave them on. And and the reason I would, the reason I'm gonna say that is just, you know. Um, you want to amend the motion then to leave the first. Three items, you're saying? No, he's going to leave them on. I'm going to leave them on. He's coming around. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I'm sorry. That just leaves Derek. No. Yeah, we're, good. Good. we're good. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor of leaving them on? All right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. All right. All right. So, did you we'll say anything? I may, not win, <laughs> I may not win at home, but. Uh, no. <laughs> Okay. All right, so now we need the motion to waive the reading of all the rest of the stuff. So I move. Uh, Where is it? you got to read it. Where is that it? upon motion duly made, uh, yep. seconded and adopted, the reading to the minutes, the full text of the resolution set out below, as well as the bonding language is waived, copies of the resolutions having been made available to those in attendance, and as recorded in these records immediately following these minutes. Um, and so that's my motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we we're, we waive that the, Jeff, and you'll you'll take care of all of that. Two second. Okay. That's all right. What else do we have to do? So do we? So we've amended. We don't have to. But do we have to vote on the resolution? Or we have to vote on the resolution, now, right? We presume we, they've been read in. And we presume they've been read in, and yeah. we can make a vote. Is that true? We're waiving the reading, but we have to vote on it. I think so. Yeah. It's the left. Right here, the left. Oh. It's it's just, so it's just, isn't it just to approve the resolution as presented? Uh, with, with Cemetery Farms and Street Lighting. And Capsule's master plan and packet. So what we should probably do we just identify which projects are going to be included in fiscal 18 and which capital plan. Okay. And All right. We so have a list ready for you. 
if you want to, I can, I'm going to just build this one. Yeah. Is it all projects on here? <coughs> Anything that's crossed, right? Except for the uh, Henry James renovation. Yeah, and the. Uh, and, and, uh, for some reason. Well, we're not going to read all of them, but we're. No, right, we're, right, right. All right, so result. Uh, yeah, so that's the reading of the. So that's the. Reading the municipal text of the resolutions up as we just did. So I think if you now say your result approve these projects as in this dollar note, then you don't have to read all the bondage and the accompanying questions and everything else. But these are, so just to be clear, these are back to the only things removed from this are Henry James, the full project. Um, there's now Eno Hall Renovations, which is the 300000 for bathrooms and the kitchen at the, the senior center site. Um, and the rest of these were as they were presented to you. So do you so we've waived the reading, so can't we uh, you simply move? You waived the reading of a of a much longer document right. which goes into great detail. Yeah, she would like us to go through the list. It, it, it just, Again, as right. John's so this described. Is, so we're res resolved on a motion duly made, seconded and adopted. The reading of the minutes of the full text resolution set below is waived. Copies of the resolutions having been made available to those in attendance and recording these records immediately preceding these minutes. Uh, but the resolution is to approve the general purpose projects, uh, bonds, which are park improvements. Oh, I'm sorry. No, so, we, can we, can, we can just say totaling 2.61. Totaling, can we say that? Totaling. It's totaling 5.53. Oh, 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 you combine that. Okay. That's all we need to do? Yeah, I think you'll be, fine. You you'll be fine with time. that. You'll be fine with that. Okay. So the total is $5,533,548. Yeah. And for the water pollution control projects, $470,000. Board of Education projects, $740,000. And from the general fund, $315,000. Total proposed capital improvement project, $7,058,548. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the only last thing that I had was to just remind everyone of what the timeline is from here. Um, I'm free next Tuesday night if anybody wants to just get together and talk <laughs> <laughs> about the car tax. Maybe we can. All right. No. So we, so the next schedule event is the referendum uh, for the Board of Finance on June 13th. We will have a uh, meeting, regular meeting of the Board of Finance, be duly noticed immediately following at about 8.15. Voting ends at 8 o'clock. We usually have the uh, results immediately after that. And at that meeting, at the cafeteria at Henry James, um, do you have a quorum? Huh? Do you have, do you have a quorum? Hopefully, yeah. I got my cell phone number, so yeah. I will be available. Uh, and at that meeting, we will re review once again the all of those items we did today and confirm the mill rate, the contingencies, uh, the combined use of reserves or, or of con contingencies, mm -hmm. as as Sean prefers to have it referred to. And uh, absent absent uh, an approved budget. <coughs> The mill rate will most likely be set as we had you know, within a fraction of what we ended up today. All right. I have a couple questions. Um, Sean, do you know if there's a sorry, yeah, sorry. <laughs> if there's a minimum number of people that need to vote? Is it a percentage of the voting public that it either passes or automatically passes? There is no charter. Uh, there isn't. Okay. Because I just read that in Avon, you know, there, there was, yeah. yeah, and then um, as a reminder, Rob, do you want 
talk about really quickly if it doesn't pass that if the oh yes what, what does it right. revert to and i think everybody in the room usually knows this but i just wanted to do to re that that if in fact uh <coughs> was, if the budget does not pass then the board of finance would reconsider it but not to raise it but to lower it so to the extent that people are you know inclined to vote no because they think the budgets are too low uh, voting no does not accomplish that uh, because it it doesn't necessarily restore funds right yeah right some towns I think actually have a if you're voting no you're voting no because it was too high or too low mm -hmm. we don't have that it's the board of it comes back to the board of finance with a clear mission to lower the budgets so and Lisa just to confirm um, again you can vote absentee ballot by going to town hall and when would the ballots be available? So actually, you can't have them mailed to you because there just right. isn't the time for the turnaround. But as soon as they're available, you can pick them up from the town clerk in town hall, as I understand it. And we can get confirmation on that. And um, could we just put on the website maybe when they're available so people who get out on vacation maybe will know? Yeah. Um, then come down here to vote. The, the only thing I'd like to add, unfortunately, uh, Matt. I think had to go somewhere, but I just think that the narrative has to change a little bit from from the overall town's perspective. I mean, we have world class administrators, world class teachers, world class t uh, students, and parents, but there has to be a, an innovative solution to be able to resolve some of the issues that 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 we're that we're facing. And I think as as board members, and I think they're pointed it out. I mean, we want to help be a part of the solution. So whether it's forming a subcommittee to be able to help yeah, all the boards to to be able to look at it, I think we're all willing to to do what needs to get done to to all pitch in. And again, I think it's a narrative change, right? I mean, you guys are world class in so many ways. It just has to be presented a little differently. All right. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all. We always do. Yeah, go ahead and start. Okay. <laughs> we'll go ahead and uh, convene the meeting of the Board of Select. Please, special meeting, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, 
with liberty and justice for all. Is there anyone who would like to speak for public audience? Mr. Kalishman. Thank you for allowing me to address the Board of Selectmen at this late hour and commend you on your address to the Board of Finance. I don't know if you're still on television, but it's for the people. These are the people that are giving you the tech. Same people that pass marijuana. Uh, what I'm here today for is that back in the November election for state representative, I opposed John Hampton. And at the time, uh, he went to the C Connecticut Business and Industry Association. And for some reason or other, they uh, they decided that they were going to back him and give him in-kind contributions such as robot calls. And uh, he had gone to the public financing at the election commission and he took, I think, in the neighborhood of roughly about nine, maybe thirty thousand dollars. And he's been at the trough and he must be very close to taking the taxpayers' money, which is roughly about a hundred thousand dollars. Plus, plus he's going to public people, private organizations to get money. I filed the complaint in October with the Connecticut Business Business and Industry Corporation company with the State Elections Enforcement Division. And I complained that he was using money improperly, corruption notes. Without going through, I have the, I have the, uh, what they call the uh, agreement. They call it a consent agreement. But I have the consent agreement here, and I don't think I'm allotted enough time to read it. But I have it, and if you like it, I'd be more than happy to take your name and mail you a copy of the consent agreement. But I just want to more or less show you that and I'm not talking through my hat. This is an order from the State Elections Enforcement Commission correcting this corruption of him going. What he did was CBIA went to Republican businesses and took money. Then they funneled it to John Hampton. You can't do that. And what he did was, uh, unbeknownst to the people that gave the money to CBIA, they figured they support Republican candidates, and it wasn't the case. It went to a Democratic candidate. There's a state law against this. And what happened was the senior vice president, Brian Flaherty, agreed that this practice, this corruption would never happen again. And he signed off on it. And the director of, uh, the executive director of the general consul, uh, he signed off on it. And his name is Michael J. Brandy. And he signed off on it. Right. This cannot be contested. It's, it's law. In other words, you can't take this to the court and appeal it. And let me tell you this, right? I don't know that much about it, but what I do know, there was an awful lot of politicking going on at that election enforcement division. In other words, I'll come right out. People were approached, but it didn't do them any good because the law was on my side. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing me to You're welcome, Mr. Kalshman. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to public audience? Ms. Coe. As far as the budget goes, I think that we have, we're right now a little short-sighted on what we're doing, and I think that we're going to have a serious issue in the future. And uh, it might even be a good idea if people do vote down the budget, which would give us time to redo the budget and to know exactly what the numbers are 
because the budget has to be the uh, the revenues are not going to come in and the expenditures are going to be uh, have to be reduced. So voting down the budget would give a true picture of what's going on. Also, uh, so I think that I don't know whether that'll ever happen. I don't, but I hope that something like that would happen, so we could really make a, a proper budget. Also. Um, I was looking into the performing arts since they're asking for uh, their uh, to know what's going on. And I went to Tom Vincent and I got this uh, performing arts events term sheet, which is uh, telling you what you what you're going to do. And this is the fee schedule, which is nothing. There is no fee schedule. And I asked him, what kind of fee schedule do you have? Well, you check off what you want and we'll tell you what the price is. That is totally inappropriate. There is no way that anybody should have that kind of a game. If they like you, they decide how much they're going to charge you. I mean, this is the most idiotic way to do business. Also, now we have proliferation of signs. And guess what? We're going to have a wedding at the Performing Arts on September 29th. Where do they get the idea that we can have a wedding? It's, uh, it says here uh, on this piece of paper, uh, missing from their schedule is a wedding. What kind of wedding are they having? Do they now start running weddings? Then they also have camping rules. They're going to have camping. And they're going to have it on our town property. Somebody has to see what's going on here. This is totally, they're charging for people to camp. They're also going to have uh, campfires. I mean, does anybody know what's going on? This is the most shameful display that I have ever seen. And I think that somebody ought to take a look at this and find out what is going on. We're camping on town grounds. We're having bonfires on, uh, on the, they're charging for these camping things and they're charging for having, um, uh, the camping reservations, two nights, Friday to Sunday. A tent site is $75. An RV is $100. And you have, you have uh, 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 Dave Ryan, he's head of zoning. And according to this, he's broken every single zoning rule that the town has imposed. So how can you have a, a chairman of zoning breaking the, the rules? Somebody ought to sit down with him and, and read the Riot Act, because this is totally inappropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Coe. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak of public audience? <coughs> All right. Seeing none, we'll go on to item A, to approve language uh, of referendum questions and other final budget actions. So I make a motion pursuant to Section 808 of the Township. The following motions were introduced at the special meeting of the Board of Finance on May 24th, 2017. Be resolved that the, appro uh, the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of the Board of Selectmen annual budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018 shall be approved and implemented in the amount of $22,604,910. Be it resolved that the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of the Board of Education annual budget for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2018, shall be approved and implemented in the amount of 68125170 Be it resolved that the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of the sewer use fund, sewer, tre sewer treatment plant, Residential rental properties, Cincinnati farms, slash special rev, uh, special programs, non-public schools, debt retirement slash capital, and capital non-reoccurring annual budgets for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018, shall be approved and implemented in the amount of 12464827 in accordance with this, with sections 406, automatic referendum, and 808, duties of the Board of Finance on the budget of the charter. The recommended operating budgets will be submitted to a referendum in the following forms. Question for referendum ballot. One, shall the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of the Board of Selectmen annual budget for the, for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018 be approved and implemented in the amount of $22,604,910. Two, shall the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance 
for the purposes of paying expenses of the Board of Education annual budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018, be approved and implemented in the amount of $68,125,170. Three, shall the appropriation recommended and approved by the Board of Finance for the purposes of paying the expenses of the sewer use fund, sewer, sewer treatment plant, residential rental properties, sensory farms slash special programs, non-public schools, debt retirement slash capital, and capital non recurring annual budgets for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018 be approved and implemented in the amount of $12,464,827. I will second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motions carry unanimously. I make a motion to set the automatic referendum for the budget uh, so I, uh, I make a motion to set the date of uh, date of Tuesday, June thir uh, 13th, 2017, for automatic referendum, pursuant to Section 406 of the Town Charter, from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Henry James Memorial School. One second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Second. Uh, before we do, are there any other? Melissa, we're good with all the motions. Oh. Good try, though. We're very close. We'll share. We're not reading that. Yeah, you two share, and I'll share with him. Okay. So, resolution of the Board of Second. So, you guys actually already did this uh, earlier on the open workshop, yeah. but I just mm. that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.